so much. There we go now. There We're live is. now. Uh, so good day, YouTube, and uh, welcome to another episode of BDU. Uh, you have myself. You have Drunken One. Uh, we sort of have Brian, Big Mister Dick. Uh, first and <laughs> foremost, I guess uh, to you, sir. What are you drinking, Drunken One? I am drinking my homebrewed uh, dry stout. It's, nice, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's been in the cake for a few days, and it's just now getting some good bubbles to it. So it's... I'm going to start. I have uh, I have six beers in front of me. As everybody knows, the way I do my shit is I do my reviews, and then I come online. Uh, today, my reviews went a little longer than they were supposed to because one of my cell phones ran out of space, so I had to find another cell phone and, and do that. But uh, I'm going to start with from from Stack Brewing. And this one was picked up for me by Boychuck or Mantos or Heathrow or Ladlob or whatever you want to call them. This is the <laughs> Expansion Sour IPA from Stack Brewing Company. Okay. So that's what I'm going to start with. Awesome, awesome. This is actually the last one I reviewed because this is the one where my phone died. Oh, hell. So we'll put that down there. Bang. And yeah. Uh, Brian's still not back, so we can't ask him what he's drinking, though I did. Actually, I just got back. Oh, Brian's back. So, Brian, what are I'm you back. drinking? I am back. And what am I drinking? I am drinking Fuambois Belgian Pale Ale from The Exchange. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. The, the Raspberry Pale Ale, eh? When, you're, when your beer comes in champagne bottles. <laughs> All right. There you go. Something like this here. <laughs> no, no, that's nothing compared to the uh, the exchange really? ones. Uh, so that now. The exchange ones are the are the real fancy bottles where they like jut out at the bottom and and all that stuff. Yeah. They're legit champagne bottles. Awesome. So, so Nick says he'll be here after he shits, uh, to which Greg says taquitos do not know the word no. Oh, yeah. I don't have the other uh, thing up in there. No, oh, no, that's not in there. That's that's in a, in a different thing. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, let's get going. There's only one guy watching right now, so whoever that is, good day. Uh, first and foremost, there is Ontario Beer News, like we always hit first. Uh, we have World Beer News after that. But uh, first... Hometown Brew Company is opening a brewery next year in Ontario's Norfolk County. So they're looking at opening up in St. Williams, Ontario, a year and a half after launching as a contract brewing. The Hometown Brew Co. has secured a location for a bricks and mortar facility in Norfolk County. Norfolk County being the Simcoe area. Mm -hmm. um, Hometown has announced a partnership with Long Point Eco Adventures, a wildlife preserve and eco tourist destination near the town of St. Williams on the shores of Lake Erie, and will be opening a brewery and tap room on the site in spring of 2019. Founded by Dusty Zamkok, Tommy DeVos, and Matt DeVos, Matt DeVos being the guy that comes to the festival every year, uh, Hometown currently brews its beer, including Blue County Blueberry Saison, Southern Ale, and Southern Light at Ramblin' Road Brewing in La Salette. Uh, Ramblin' Road being the brewery owned by Picard's Peanuts. Also explains why their why their beer doesn't taste all that great all the time. <laughs> um, what else do we have? New Scotland Brewing is opening in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. So instead of being called Nova Scotia, they're called New Scotland. Um, New Scotland Brewing Company has been founded by brothers Kevin and Scott Salcre of New Scotland Clothing Company, along with brewer Mike Gillespie. Uh, set to open its doors tomorrow, which is... Actually, tomorrow, July 14th, New Scotland features a 5 hectoliter brew house and 56 hectoliter fermenters, wow. as well as a 40-seat tap room and retail store. Details of the beers to be available at opening haven't been announced, but when the project was originally announced earlier this year, it was stated the brewery would, pro would produce a lineup of five core brands along with a rotation of five sometimes experimental projects. All right. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That opens up tomorrow for any of you near Dartmouth. Go and see it. Uh, Evermore Brewing is now open in Summerside, Summerside PEI. So again, for you uh, you Nova Scotia, New Brunswick PEI, all, all you Maritimers, there's another brewery there, Evermore Brewing. Uh, they have a Summerside Light, which is the 
flagship beer and a hoppy lager, as well as other beverages, food service, <laughs> and other beers that will be available later this year. But for now, customers can order in delivery. There you go. All right. Uh, what else do we have off this? Uh, Grizzly Paw Brewing opens Tank 310 Restaurant at their production brewery. Uh, that's in Alberta, Grizzly Paw Brewing. Uh, so they had a production brewery and they had a uh, tap room. Uh, so now they have a tap room at both. Vice and Virtue Brewing now open in Kelowna, BC. Uh, they have opened with a, what is this? They were partners in a space close to Kettle Valley Brewing, Redbird Brewing, and Tree Brewing. They are opening up with the White Lie Pilsner, Love Potion Raspberry Berliner Vice, Giver Pale, Giver Pale Ale, and Home Wrecker New England IPA. <laughs> okay. Home Wrecker. Almost done the Ontario beer news, and then we have, uh, we'll go to Kelements, we'll chat a little bit, then we'll go on to World Beer News. Uh, Good Buddy Brewing debuts its newest partner, as the newest partner, sorry, at Callister Brewing. Uh, Callister Brewing is in BC. They're on Vancouver Island. They uh, basically are a, they're a lot like the good beer folks, like Common Good and all that, where they are a, a contract brewer facility where all contract brewers come in and work out of there. So they are brewing there now, and they will be making a peanut butter and jelly stout and a <laughs> sad dad IPA. Uh, that stout sounds good. Yeah. Peanut butter and jam stout. Peanut butter and jam stout. Interesting. Uh, Sundown Brewing is debuting this weekend at the Squamish Beer Festival in BC. So another BC brewery opening up. It doesn't have anything to say about the beers other than they're going to be German-style craft beer. So overpriced pilsners and lagers. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> uh, OT Brewing has launched in Calgary. OT Brewing uh, opened up with the five five hundred hazy IPA and the flagstick the flagstick hazy pale ale. Okay, so a lot of gypsum, a lot of gypsum and flour used in those beers. Mm -hmm. um, Also from Callister Brewing, that that uh, that contract brewing facility, Real Cask Brewing has closed down after three years of brewing there. Wow. Uh, it doesn't really say much about why, but they will have a closing party mm. Sunday. Well, they already had the closing party. It was July 8th at 1 p.m. Didn't hear anything about it. Uh, Boar City <laughs> Brewing. How do you not make money as a brewery? How do you not make money well, they, as a brewery? They were, they were a contract brewer, right? So you don't really make much as a contract brewer. Oh, actually. Uh, Boar City Brewing has rebranded as Grand Monk Artisan Ales. Boar City is in Moncton, New Brunswick. Grand Brand Monk Artisan Brand Ales. Party's over. Also now brewing uh, the new three-barrel hectoliter system. They are brewing a Caseway IPA, Mundo IPA, Vent Dune Belgian Pale Ale and Space Time Odyssey Porter. All right. All right. Hello. 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 The red beard guy. Hello. How are you, Mr. <laughs> Carey? What's going on? Not much at all. Drinking what are you some, drinking there? I'm drinking some expansion sour IPA from Stack. That's what I'm drinking. So really? this expansion uh, sour. PA from Stack. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. I was in Sudbury today for work, and uh, work to finish kind of early, so I. Mantos in. was in Sudbury on the weekend for a wedding. Nice. Did you get uh, anything else? Yes, he brought me some other things. Did you, do you have Do you have uh, Mangzaro? Yes, the Mango Milkshake IPA. That, that's the other one I got. That's cool, man. Nice. Wow. And to tomorrow, I am the Highlander Brew Guy at North on Top Festival in Hilly. Have you reviewed the Mango whatever yet? <laughs> I have not reviewed yet. I try. We I tried should, it. We should. We should do it. We should do it as a collab review. We could do. I'm down. I'd be down. That'd be cool. Anyway, Trestle Brewing is opening in Perry Sound, Ontario. They are open. They've been open know, for this, almost this, a month this, now. I think. No, about two weeks. Uh, 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 July. This, like, this this article was posted June 29th. My, my sister put a picture of her and her fiance on the patio a little while ago now they, they might know people though so maybe they got in a bit early but yeah, this yeah. this article was posted june 29th the so, brewing ipa right now 
They uh, opened apparently with Trestle Golden Ale and the Red Rock Rye Porter. I haven't tried the Porter. The Golden Ale is a Golden Ale. Like <laughs> it's nothing, yeah. nothing really amazing about it, but it's very, it's you know, what a lot of them do. They start off with the super approachable stuff to try to exactly, you know, yeah. But, now we did we did talk about this brewery having a contest to name its beers. It still doesn't say what the beers were named, but the beers were a stout, an IPA, a red, a blonde, and a blueberry blonde. But Dildo Brewing and Museum are now open. I heard about that. So That's in awesome. Dildo, Newfoundland, you can go to Dildo Brewing. Why wouldn't you come on? A cold glass of Dildo. Get a nice cold glass. And like my buddy, I was talking to my you buddy. Know, if, they don't, if, they don't make, oh, if they don't make a pocket penis porter, they fail. <laughs> so I'm talking, I'm talking to one of my friends at work, right? And he's the guy that, you know, talked about making, you know, beer in a bag and how this would be an amazing idea. As soon as he heard about this and how they were naming things, he's like, you know, they should do it in cans. A 355 milliliter can and a 500 milliliter can. You can go, do you want the big dildo or the little dildo? Mm. Yeah, that's good too. Or there has to be an oversized black can of something. Yes. <laughs> uh, Double <Mr>. imperial <laughs> barrel H stout. Mm. Uh, so what do we have? Uh, Drunken One is saying hi to people. Uh, Oswald Reef. Good day, Oswald Reef. What's going on to you? Oh, uh, yes, we are, we are still live. We're going to be live for a while. A while. A while. A while. while. Wow. Uh, so, do you like my shirt? I really like my shirt. Look at that shirt. Ooh. That's a fucking fantastic. Ooh, that's a fantastic shirt. <laughs> Isn't it just? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, I like my shirt. I like you, know, you know what else? You know what else I got when I was in Sudbury? Not this shirt. That's for sure. Oh. Blueberries. Blueberries. Oh. Yeah, blueberries are not as good as an albino sex fest shirt. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say as far, no as, far, beer. as far as flavor goes. Uh, I, no, as far as flavor goes, the albino rhino sex festival is. is <laughs> I like how you put the 19 on there. That way, when you're wearing it next year, it doesn't seem like it's so old. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so basically, with the company that I I use for my shirts, if I get him a new customer, every time I get him a new customer, he'll print me out like 15 shirts for free. So this time I did stupid shirts. I'm like, yeah, let's do these. Awesome. When do I get mine? No, sometime <laughs> soon. I would wear the shit out of that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I plan on wearing mine tomorrow at uh, another beer festival. Oh yeah. So so what are they having you do, uh, uh, Red Beard, Kerry? I am uh, serving 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 beer for Highlander. Oh, awesome. <laughs> And actually, randomly, I was I was kind of on the news tonight. They had like a there was a they did a Skype call with the organizer of the festival, and they had like this kind of back stock footage of like last year playing in the background. And there was a bunch of footage of me. It was actually pretty cool. I was on oh, the news. Yeah. Imagine that on TV and as an American. More ratings than they put freaks on television. So <laughs> oh. welcome to the chat, Nick. Yeah, right. <laughs> Serious bastards. <laughs> What's Here. going on, Nicholas? Uh, not a whole lot. What's going on with you guys? Nothing at all. Still on the, still waiting for the uh, the Eric Carlson watch. Oh. Hmm? The uh, hockey thing. Oh. When it comes to Senators, I'm like, eh. Yeah, it's okay. They're still going to be better than the than the Canadians next year. <laughs> better than the Canadians next year. Mr. <laughs> finished, finished worse than the Habs did. I'd just be happy with like not finishing in last place. They didn't finish last place. That was Buffalo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Buffalo finished last place last year. Uh, they are the so first team ever to finish 31st place. It's true. They're asking some questions over there in the chat there, Mr. Chad. Yes, I saw that. We will get to that now that we're... Uh, oh, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You the man. I, I am not the man. I am not the man. <laughs> well, let me just close this, and we'll come over here, and we have... What, I'll be wearing my Albino Ryan Sex Fest t-shirt soon. <laughs> uh, what do we have? So, uh, Oswald Reef asks, so what's the sharpest punch-me-in-the-face IPA around right now? 
I need to replace my jerk face 9000 with something. Uh, so jerk face 9000 was was parallel 49 out in BC, wasn't it? So are you out on on the on the west coast? I don't know much out there. Uh, Satori Harvest from Driftwood was was punch you in the face, and there was a Green Reaper. That one almost shut my throat down. Uh, here in Ontario, immodest, according to Ashley, he's probably right. Uh, for Ontario, there's a lot of things in Ontario that are good, but are they punch you in the face? I don't know. Just because just you hate them, I'm going to bring up uh, Double Dead Elephant. That's not really punch you in the face. That's punch you in the face with price before it was put in cans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, that the price, now that it's in cans and the price is better, it's actually a solid beer. It was a solid Actually, beer to begin with, but it wasn't a beer I would ever buy again because the fucking ten dollar price tag was fucking retarded. Yeah, Sorry, I don't like using that word, but it was fucking retarded. Randomly, <laughs> I was at a place here in town tonight, and they had the uh, the new Halcyon something or other. It's like Bose. Something. It was a Brett IPA, and that was I, I. I took two drinks of it, and I was like, it's it's too much of a just the hot presence with that Brett punch presence. It would it. It, I didn't like it at all. Oh, he's in uh, Oswald's in Winnipeg. Um, you know what? If if I get a hold of the Reverend tonight, I'll ask him what was the worst beer he drank in Winnipeg when he was there for a month. Because whatever the worst beer was was probably what you're looking for. <laughs> he hates hops with a passion. Labatt Blue is his beer, um, but oh, he really? tries them all. He'll try. That's the one thing I'll give him. He'll try them all. <laughs> he usually freaks out about them, but he'll try them. Right. Oh, Tim's Brews is asking drunken one what's going on. Oh, hey, Tim's Brews. Same old stuff. So, uh, Thrillist put up a list, and this goes into what you were asking, Oswald. But, but uh, the 33 hottest IPAs in the U.S. right now with this from Thrillist. Uh, so, let's see if we've had any of these. I know at least the first one I haven't even heard of, which is La Combra's Project Dank. Uh, it's 7.5% alcohol. It's made in Albuquerque, New, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, next is Tired Hands from Pennsylvania. Their Alien Church IPA. 7% alcohol. Uh, Oregon Block 15 Brewing Sticky Hands IPA. 8.2%. Still nothing I've had. If any no, of you guys no. have had any of them, oh, just yeah, throw up. Pop. Oh, I'm gonna pipe up. <laughs> I got nothing. Uh, Burial Brewing Surf Wax IPA from Asheville, North Carolina. That's the lowest so far at six point eight. That uh, just doesn't sound tasty. Surf wax. Yeah. Toppling Goliath uh, is King Sue in Iowa, eight percent. I've had a lot of stuff from Toppling Goliath, but not not anything like that. Uh, Lupulin Brewing's Honey in Minnesota, six point two. Main beer, oh, main beer's lunch. I've had this. Uh, this is seven percent alcohol. It's from Freeport, Maine. Uh, I bought it in New York at a uh, uh, Premier Gourmet. It was it was okay. I wouldn't I had a bottle of that from uh, Brewed and Bottled. Uh, back. Well, I actually brought it to the the, uh, the bottle share. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say that's one of the hottest beers though. I mean, it was it was yeah. okay. Like, what do they uh, mean by hottest? Like spicy like, hot? Or no, like uh, really, like bitter. Biggest hyped right now, sought oh. after. I don't know if I would call it that sought after. No, that's that's what I'm saying. Like uh, foam brewers in uh, Vermont, their pavement imperial IPA. There's a lot of other things I could think from Vermont that would be on this list, but not that one uh, because I've never even heard of that brewery. Hmm. Uh, Six point six percent creature comforts Tropicala. That's actually an awesome, uh, awesome name. Just available in Georgia, though, unfortunately. Uh, Civil Society's Flesh, 6.2% uh, alcohol. Again, just flor uh, just available in its in its state of Florida. Um, what do we have next? Pipeworks Ninjas versus Unicorns from Chicago, Illinois, 8%. Uh, eight states. It's it distributed in eight states, so all over the Midwest. Uh, Michigan's. Old Nation M43, 6.8% alcohol. Uh, if anyone's wondering, Michigan is the, uh, well, that's where all the hottest breweries from Pennsylvania are, according to one Greg. 
Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina's own not a hop drop and roll at 7.2. I've heard of one of these beers so far. Oh, wait, I've had this one. I had this one at uh, I had this one at Liquid Arts Fest. Uh, Lamplighter, Rabbit, Rabbit, double IPA. How From was it? Cambridge, massive two shits. It was actually pretty good. <laughs> massive two shits. 5 percent alcohol. <laughs> Who writes this stuff? <laughs> Uh, Bearded Iris Home Style from Nashville, Tennessee. It's available in Tennessee and Kentucky. at 6% alcohol. So, so far, this is the lowest ABV beer on the list, which means it's probably the one I'd like the most out of them all. Uh, Stone Brewing in California. It's nationwide, so even you should be able to get a drunken one. This is oh, yeah. a Scorpion Bowl IPA. Mm. I, I haven't heard right, anything. I guess Stone and IPA seems to... Seems to go well together. <laughs> Mother Road Brewing's Tower Station at 7.3. Uh, Beachwood Brewing's Thrill Seeker IPA in California, and it's available in California and Colorado. Uh, Welder Works Brewing's Juicy Bits from Colorado, available in solely Colorado. Fair State's Mirror Universe in Minnesota. None, like, how are these hot? They're not available anywhere. How are these sought after? Right. Uh, Okay, this one I would expect. This one's a brewery exclusive, and that's where I would expect it to be on this list, and I expected to see this. This is from Massive Two Shits. This is Treehouse Julius. Yes. I expected to see that one on there. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, Finback and Wakefield. Smooth Beats Miami from New York, New York. Trilliums. Uh, Kitar Bear Double IPA again from Massive Two Shits, and uh, again another one I would expect to have seen on here. Trillium and Treehouse, two things that are are hugely sought after quite often. Uh, next one is another one that I expected to see on here. I expected to basically see this list being Treehouse, Trillium, and Hill Farmstead beers, and the next one's Hill Farmstead's Abner in Vermont. Uh, three Taverns, Rowdy and Proud from Georgia. Uh, New Belgium's Hemperer. Okay, I've seen one. that posted a lot on the uh, Facebook yeah. page and stuff. Yeah, I saw that at Brewton Bottle. They should have bought one. But I was thinking hemp beer? Meh. I've only had one. It was, it was good. I had one from, I can't remember what the hell it was, but it was actually really good, the one I had. Hmm. Uh, I like the first line in the description is first off, the name is Gangster. It tells you exactly what the beer is pure hemp. <laughs> As soon as it's poured, the amount of dank in its aroma is unprecedented. Uh oh. It immediately has people in the room looking around to see who lit up. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. That's dank. <laughs> nah, from Florida, available in 21 states, Green Benches Sunshine City. Uh, Transient Artisan Ales, The Juice is Loose from Michigan. Uh, Fulton 300 in Minnesota. Hop Butcher for the World Galaxy Bowl in Illinois. Mm. Hopworks Urban Brewery Totally Chill Hazy IPA in Oregon. Fort George Three Way IPA from Oregon. I've not heard of like most of these. Uh, I haven't either. And man, I, I've, been, I've been doing this shit for a long time and half these breweries I've never even heard of. And I know, you know, it's the U S and there's all these breweries and blah, 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 blah. But you know, the big hyped breweries, the ones that are the hottest beers out there, I should still have known about, you know, yeah. I've heard a few of them. Like I'm on Instagram all the time. And half of these breweries I have not seen or heard of. Yeah. From Oregon. Uh, this one is X Nova's brewing. Not too bright. And that was the last one on the list. So I've heard, I've heard of like eight of them. Wow. I expected a few of them on there. One of them that I've heard of, I wouldn't really say should have been on there. Uh, but yeah. But I mean, there's no there's no three Floyds on there. There's no there's not any Heady Topper or uh, anything from Alchemist. Banger. You need to find a list of the Canadian uh, IPAs. I was gonna say I would expect an uh, Alchemist Focal Banger to be on there. Yeah, like you, you'd expect you'd expect some Alchemist beers. I expected a few more Treehouse beers and Trillium and and stuff like that. Uh, but I mean, it is what it is, right? It's thrillist, it's clickbait stuff. But it, it was something cool to read through. 
Uh, what do we have going on on the uh, on the comments here? Wait, Labat Blue? No, that dude is too much Winnipeg for me. <laughs> uh, just drown me in half pints. Uh, stir sticks. You know what? He brought me back some half pints the first year he went to Winnipeg, and they were they were pretty. If anyone hears weird sounds, it's the fucking puppies. Okay, the puppies are like a, uh, eight days old. They're making noise. Their mom is snoring while they're all suckling her teats. Could you have seven puppies suckling your teats and sleep through it? Because she can. She can sleep through it. <laughs> hey, I don't know. You ever ever had dogs sucking your teats, sir, uh, Chad? Uh, no, 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 I have not. <laughs> so how would you know if you haven't done all, it? All, all seven of your teats? <laughs> all seven <laughs> of your teats. <laughs> all seven of my teats, yes. Actually, you know, she, she has eight teats, so it's a good thing she only had seven puppies. Actually, randomly talking about animals, I went I went outside today to walk the dog, and I walked around the side of the building where I hadn't walked in a couple days. And there's groundhogs that live out there, and the one guy that my boss has working for him was trying to catch it in a live trap. And the fucking guy, I guess, caught it in the live trap. I'm oh. assuming like two days ago, oh, and yeah. just left it there because I found it today dead in the live trap. Oh. I was fucking pissed, man. Like like right. he basically right. let it bake in the sun to death. Like that, wow. that's a terrible, terrible, terrible way for anything to die, man. True. The groundhogs are fucking adorable. I was not happy. <laughs> like, understandable, you know. Sometimes they can be a um, nuisance and stuff, but this one was not hurting anything. It was. It just needed. It just wanted to relocate it. Fair enough. But to let that happen, I'm just. I'm not happy at all with him. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh. not. It's messed up. I like animals. All animals. When I was a kid, I used to like with my grandpa. I'd help him with like the haying and stuff in his fields. And, you know, you'd find, like, mice and stuff that were injured after the fucking hay was all cut and stuff. And I'd, like, take them and bring them home and, like, try to give them – try to, like, uh, try to save them. But they usually just died anyway. But I kind of – I gave them, I guess, a, a comfortable end to their life more than they would have had just laying out yeah, there. Yeah, blowing them shot. Yeah, I saw a snake or something might have come along and <laughs> – I don't know. Fuck. St. Yeah. Redbeard of a CC. There you go. There you go. He's, he's talking about bottom shotguns. <laughs> it's okay, little fella. <laughs> I got actually, um, there's a show on history called Alone. I don't know if any of you guys ever watch it, but it's in its new season now. And uh, the latest episode I just watched before coming on here, uh, the one guy, he's killed a few pheasants now and a squirrel, I think. And it's like, it's kind of starting to get to him. Like, he's the kind of guy, like, if he kills something, he wants it to be, like, done. So, like, he shoots a shot off. Grouse with a bow and arrow, and the thing like ran for like half a mile, and he felt like that thing suffered, kind of. That's the same way I like I. If I'm in that situation, you know, you have to you have to kill to survive. You right. have to kill this, but it's still like I I don't I wouldn't like it. Like I've I've killed animals in my and I don't like killing things at all. Yeah, you, you want it to be short and sweet for sure. Yeah. I don't know. Like just some people like and again like the guy when I called him and told him about the groundhog, he was like, oh yeah, sweet, and I'm like. That's so not cool, man. Like he was like so nonchalant about it. It's just a groundhog, whatever. It's like it, it kind of is just a groundhog, but still, the way that it died, fucking terrible. All right, it's an animal, not right? Cool. Anyway, let the Chad say something and bring the mood back up. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeehaw. There you go. There you go. Everybody is rejuvenated. Awesome. So uh, before we go on to our our next topic, uh, how was how was uh how was the car that drove up to your work today there? Brian, um, the very very expensive car that pulled up to my work today. Yes, the McLaren 720s. Uh -oh. Ooh, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Looking for antifreeze. Wow, that's far and like I want to say I Wait. saw there was a Bentley Continental here in town a couple of years ago. That's probably the most expensive car. That or maybe one of the land. There's been a couple of Lamborghinis. But my, not McLaren. It, 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 Those are fucking. A McLaren looking a McLaren of all cars looking for antifreeze in the summer. Doesn't that throw off red flags for you? Um, <laughs> well, this guy looked like it was totally decked out with like he had to be part of like some sort of like gumball rally or North Face yeah. rally or something like that. Antifreeze yeah, is also coolant. And yeah. he says he's so, been having mm. issues with uh, losing coolant since Montreal. Oh, uh, okay. 
and he's just been going to like any like Walmart or parts store and just putting wow. random stuff into the car. So he's just leaving a trail of fucking antifreeze down the goddamn highway. Like he he's gonna fucking kill a bunch of animals too. Fuck that guy. <laughs> My God, I just don't care, man. Wow. <laughs> And it's your million dollar car. You're just gonna put whatever shit you can yeah, find in. That's yeah. also like that's that's something like you get that fucking shit looked at right Surprise, away. Man. Motherfucker. Really like a million dollar car. Hard, 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 hard to find you get something like that looked at. Oh, right? It was about four hundred thousand for that car. Wow. That's yeah, insane. They're, they're not cheap. But again, like that's the kind you spend that amount of money. money then obviously, you can get it fixed. You know, or unless he's just yeah, got yeah, that much you money. Have to take you have to take it to a specialist to do that. that like that's a weird exactly point, exactly you know. point. No, no mom and pop garage is going to be able to fix it up for you. Yeah, you're not going to take it to Jesse's auto body or something like that. It's, uh, well, I was saying that to him, too. I was like, I'm surprised they didn't end up at August Automotive where where Mantos works. You know, who specializes in those. You told me about that guy. Yeah, the guy that said, like, the, the guy had the brake job on his Porsche or something and cried when he got the price. Uh -huh. told me all about him. That's that's a funny that's a funny point right there. But also, if they came from Montreal, there must have been some way to like fire up the GPS and find something between Montreal and fucking like St. Catharines or like that far down south to fix that car. When when you went through Toronto, there's probably Toronto and Ottawa were probably your only two choices, really. But even like, there's probably there's gonna be somewhere in those cities to. Well, I mean, uh, like, even even patch it up and like get someone to look like at it. Paul, and at least when Paul brought up his Jag and the Jag died, the only place the Jag could go was Toronto, unless Boychuk took care of it. And Boychuk's like, I can fix it, but you're going to be waiting for parts from Toronto anyway, and it's going to take a week for me to get them. That's that's the possible thing. I was also thinking is like, who, even in Toronto, I don't know if anyone's going to have a large stock of McLaren parts. That's. That's a pretty exotic car to have anywhere in Canada. Chad, do you have a McLaren in your garage right now? No, I actually, cool. I'm actually uh, carless in the garage for the first time in a few months. There's been six different cars through that garage. Nothing in there right now. The last one that was in there was a 1969 Oldsmobile. Your garage is a whore. It is. It's had a lot of, it's had a lot of things <laughs> in and out of it. My, my, my car's been in there a couple times. You yeah, know? your car was in there too, yeah. Oh, that's, there's no standards <laughs> to this. No, no. There, there's been a Jag in there. There's been a there's been a Ford Model T. There's been a, uh, a Model T. That's funny. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, there's been a lot of things in and out of that garage. Does did you, did, did have you a get, Model T as well? Did you get a ride? Does have a Model T as well, but it wasn't his. Did you take a ride the Model T? Yes, we did. Really? Those I are Nick, fucking. I think Nick's been in that car too. Those are crazy. Uh, uh, Boy Chuck's car. Yeah, his Ford. Uh, yeah, that. The one we could barely, well, you could probably fit in it a whole lot better now. Oh, yeah. Then I could. But, that, but that's not a yeah. Model T. That's a tr that's an old truck he has, though, right? No, no. He, that was no. a Roadster. Uh, it was a 33, 33 Ford, I think. I might have a picture on Facebook. So. I remember watching an older episode of Top Gear when Jeremy Clarkson was driving a Model T through a field. And it's got, it has two gears. And it's like the, the, the main one has a top speed of something and you go, whatever. And as soon as you switch into the other one, it's like the car is now going like 40 miles an hour, whether you want it to or not. It's just like you're going through these fields in Britain, just fucking in a, give it in, a, in a time when roads didn't really uh, exist. Yeah, pretty much, man. Like, well, it's, I, I wrote a story a while ago in New York City. There it is. Way back when, the first two cars. Wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. There, you there you go. That's, that's that, Boychuk's car right there. There you go. That's, 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 that's really, really nice. nice. Wow. Cool. That's a cool little hot rod. That is cool. that's, that's one of his many cars. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, isn't that his oldest or something? No, he has one older. Oh. Well, you got that's that one from his grandfather? Yes, that was his grandfather. <laughs> Wow. Jesus. Sorry. Hey, well, like I was saying, the, uh, the, apparently when New York City was, you know, growing and stuff, the first two cars that were ever purchased in the city of New York City collided at one point. There was only two <laughs> cars in the whole city oh, and they yeah, crashed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my next beer is going to be a beer that actually Brian was talking to me about tonight, which is the only reason I picked <laughs> it up. It's Punch. Punch. I'm going to be drinking Punch next. Punch is a butterfly pea flower goza. Oh, that's the one I was looking yeah, up. This is the one you wanted to see the color of. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's a weird purple color. Oh, yes it is. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to have to message you because I might be making some brewery trips tomorrow. And I might okay. be up in Niagara on Sunday. So, 
but there's a shit ton of beers you're gonna want, so you might wanna might have to discuss what you want unless you want to spend like five hundred bucks on beer. Where are you going? Uh, well, just in the West End, so I'm gonna hit up Halo, uh, Indiana House. Send me a list of where you're going, and I'll send you some beers. Uh, like yeah. usual, I'll probably have some cash, and then I'll probably have to wait until I get paid to send you the rest. Get paid? Jesus. You should be hooking, making oh, actually, extra money. Anyway, <laughs> uh, speaking of cool beer, um, you could probably be able to see this. Marcel is coming back from his uh, trip to uh, the East Coast with his girlfriend soon. And if I can find the message you sent me. There it is right there. This is uh, his haul that he's bringing back right wow. now. He got a few beers, and he's holding some fancy scotch or something that I can kind of – It's it says monster on it. Something monster, I'm assuming, single monster. It's probably a dildo monster cock. No, it's, uh, it says scotch whiskey. I can read monster and peat, – peat monster, scotch whiskey. Single malt scotch whiskey? Maybe I think th this is the uh, the the thing I was I think it was uh, I don't know, I was in a live chat it was uh, Lee was going on about this on the uh, after chat of the beer analysis earlier last earlier this week about this uh, this is the place where they say single malt Scotch whiskey and the people in Scotland were oh, like all in an uproar or something about it. Mm. No, you're actually, no, I, no, 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 yeah, I'll you're not going to Britain. Two seconds, my boss. Glenora, Glenora, that's what it is. Just Mick says good day from uh, from Calgary, and uh, I'll just say it for everybody: good day from Niagara, Niagara, New Brunswick. Uh, who cares about North Bay, motherfucker? Uh, Toronto, <laughs> hey, Toronto, speak for me, Chad. Texas. Toronto, you don't speak for me, Chad. Universe. Good day, by the way. Bunch of damn Yankees. What the hell am I doing hanging out with you anyway? <laughs> yeah, you should be hanging out with your Trump supporters and hating the oh, darkies. Damn. Oh. Oh, he's a trump card. <laughs> uh, when we go offline, I'll tell you a story about what happened to me at work on Tuesday. Uh, can't oh. talk about it online, but it, it was fun. It was fun. Sounds like a good time. It, it was a good time. Uh, what else do we have? We have a lot of beer news still outstanding. Uh, let's see here. Are you outstanding in your field? I'm not outstanding in my field. Uh, what do we have going on? What should we talk about? I mean, if I had a field, I'd be outstanding in it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, how about this? According to the Oomch. Crown speech here in Ontario, the, well, the throne speech, uh, beer will be coming to corner stores and big box stores. That's a good thing. No. No? You don't think so? <laughs> if it's good, if you like, want to go get like Budweiser or Coors oh, Light. Yeah. Well, maybe the beer store will be able to open up its shelves to more other beers then, since, you know, everybody can get butt anywhere. I mean, we, we have craft beers at the gas stations and stuff. I mean, some, some of them do. It's just a lot of them will buy the stuff they know will move. That's the problem, right? A lot of right. them will be like, this will move, so we're going to buy this. And there yeah, will be some that are going to be like, you know what? We could, we could actually become a bottle shop. Let's get interesting things. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there's certain places out here where they have a really good selection, but then, yeah, just other places that's... Your, it's your regular old macros like you were just talking about. You know what? I'm all for the free market. If a gas station or convenience store wants to sell beer and they just want to sell Coors and Budweiser, then you know what? That's the right to do so if that's what they think sells. And and like Chad said, if a place wants to be specialized and start bringing really cool stuff, then you know what? There'll be an audience for that too and people will buy shit from them. Yeah. It open the door for places to be bottle shop oriented because if they're – Buying beers, but isn't doesn't the like is it isn't it still controlled by the LCBO or the government? Yep. Everything is somehow? still controlled. Well, that Everything has to be rubber stamped by the uh, liquor commission first. Yep. Can I get a tiny little refresher? Are we talking about the corner store stuff right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I heard well, like Dougie's gonna do for us, but we haven't heard uh, it. Well, distraction. Uh, I, I've heard, uh, well, the so, one the one good thing I've heard so far is apparently he's getting rid of that whole new discovery, insane, ridiculous math they're teaching these days. Which, that's good, but of like everything, like that's rolling back the sex ed and stuff and getting okay. rid of $100 million no fix the school fund. No and, politics. Sorry, yep, I apologize. Uh, so, so a Peter Can Roman, we talk about religion? I'm getting another beer. I'm so <laughs> a tea-infused beer that won him at... I heard about pacifarianism. 
So this Peterborough man creates a tea-infused beer that wins him a Taps Magazine Award. This is Bentley Vass who won it, 23-year-old Bentley Vass. Bentley Vass actually graduated the Niagara Brewing College course uh, last, last, last uh, Project Brew. So back in May, he was the graduate. He actually made a Niagara Fog, which was a London Fog beer. Uh, the Niagara Fog was the best beer at that festival. So now he has a second award. Uh, anyway, he said that beer was always his passion, and now getting everyone to like his beer is his mission. That sounds like like he's forcing himself upon people. And he <laughs> might as well do that. Uh, anyway, so he, and the beer he won his award with from uh, the beer he won his Taps award with was the same beer he won a won the the beer well the project brew with it was his his Niagara Fog, which is an Earl Grey tea infused beer. Uh, so it's it's vanilla, it's Earl Grey tea, steamed milk, and a bit of lavender. Lavender. Lap dancer. <laughs> Sorry. Jim um, B used to I'm make cracking green open a different beer now. Beer. Was okay. The Mangzaros. Mangzaro. Mangzaro. He's this looking to open. He's looking to open his own brewery in Peterborough. It's a mango milkshake IPA. Oh, from I get. So you're oh you're opening that beer now? No, I've got I've got one in the fridge for review purposes. This okay. is just okay. yeah. Okay. No worries. I, I I'm I'm totally down. Like I said, I want to do a collab one. It's funny mm -hmm. though. Like I, every stack seasonal I've ever ever seen. It's all they do, which is it works. But you can tell it's always just a rewrapped can. Yeah, yeah. Of some other of one of their like core ones that are actually printed and they put a label on, but I like this one. Mang the, the the description. Struck by lightning while climbing a mango tree, Mangzaro great gained the unique ability to manipulate mangoes on a molecular level. Believing Ooh. himself to be superior to average humans, Mangzaro used his powers for world domination and other crimes of passion. Fruit. This mang milkshake IPA is bold flavors of mango, pineapple, and peaches with a cool tropical hop finish. If I gained a superpower and my superpower was to manipulate mangoes on a molecular level, I'd just fucking kill myself. That, you know what, though? Like, it, it's, that it's, is the it, world's it, shittiest superpower. It's basically Magneto, but with mangoes. Like, as long as you have mangoes nearby, you're yeah, going to fuck difference, shit The up. difference is Magneto has metal all around him that he can manipulate. What, if there's no mangoes around me, what the fuck so am I going to do? Always keep mangoes <laughs> on your person. It's pretty simple. You can, like, but even if I do, what am I going to do? Throw mangoes at people and they squash all over the place? No, like, you, you, yeah, you can manipulate them on a molecular level. You can make them into, like, knives and shit, man. Like, you could, like... Again, just like Magneto, but with mangoes. What, what if Ma I'm fucking fighting Chad, Chad the super villain albino rhino? I just throw a couple mangoes at him, he gets dirty, then he snaps my neck. That's a shitty superpower. <laughs> Chad looks like a guy that might enjoy a mango. You could just feed him to him. But, uh, but that, that's, that's, that's yeah, how you... Yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd eat all my mangoes. Mango! He'd, he'd eat my mangoes. mango -rifico. The, the funny thing about that little, little segue here is there is a bartender at my place of business who we have said that if he was a stripper, his stripper name would be Mango. And we get every new supervisor to just go up to him and go, hi, Mango. Whenever we walk <laughs> into the bar, we're like, Mango! <laughs> really angry. Uh, really angry. Good old fucking Chris Kattan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those skins were so bad. Uh, they were funny, but they were so like, they were, and then there was the one, he was like a monkey baby or something in a couple skits. Like Chris Kattan was... Really good at physical comedy, I gotta say. And now he's dead. Is he though? Oh. Seriously? No, I, I think he's alive, but I haven't seen anything oh. from him oh, yeah, in okay. years. His, his career is dead. His career is dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you're yeah, you're right. He hasn't. Yeah, it was I, Mr. I think it was Mr. Peepers and Mango were his characters. I want to that. Yeah, that was uh, Mr. Peepers. That was that one. And he was the uh, one of the guys in Night of the Roxbury too. The whole. Headbang, and it was him and Will Ferrell, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. I'm just wondering. I, I want to say I saw him somewhat recently in a, uh, a guest starring in a TV show or something. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna look at Chris Catan. Wikipedia. Let's see. What's he been up to? So I really enjoy my my sex shirt in sweaty gray. Oh shit! You 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 actually got that shirt? We actually got one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you know who else is gonna get one? Nicholas is gonna get one. Oh, Can I get sake. a shirt like that? 
Uh, we can we can arrange that if I see you on Sunday. Yeah. Not 100% sure. I'll let you know tomorrow if we are going up on Sunday, but I will let you know. Have you seen the picture that Nick took in my place of my two pigs fucking? That looks very similar to those two rhinos. Yes, fucking yes, pigs. I have seen that picture of the two pigs <laughs> fucking on your on your like nightstand. Oh God. Yep. Nice. Yeah, Nick. Nick had to sleep with that. Uh, now, if you, if you come on Sunday, I can let you meet the puppies. Oh, babe. Oh, <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna tell my wife. We'll see. Children nuts. Randomly, yep. now, that he, now that he can't hear us, I'll tell everybody else just because I don't really care. Chris Catan has been working. Actually, actually, come back. Chris Catan has been working really steadily. All like he, not in anything big. But he's been in like bit parts and TV shows and movies and stuff. He's he's still working. Oh, it might be one of those things where he made a decent amount of money. Yep, those are my pigs. <clears throat> there you go. There's your pigs. Nice. Fucker. Here, here's the funny story <laughs> behind that is I actually went to Cuba and I was looking for souvenirs for like you know family members. So I got that for my mom, and my mom looked at it. She's like, I don't want this in my house. It's like a total <laughs> Tom Green joke. It's like I bought. It's like that that hooker mobile. Uh, yeah, so I just, I just, I, I just bought, took it Don't back. you appreciate the gift? Why don't you like it, Mom? Oh, he, the, the, slut mobile, the slut mobile was his dad's car. So when he painted the hood, yeah. that was all. Oh, that was. Now, what he did, what he did that his mom didn't like is when he painted the house, uh, painted the house plaid. I don't think I saw that one. I I lived a awesome, blocks though. away from him when I lived in Ottawa, so I got to see that. He was actually here in North Bay about like. I don't know, a kilometer that way from where I live because uh, the strip club used to be right next to the Bible store. <laughs> it was pretty funny. That, that's awesome. Because why not? Yeah, just why not? I don't, I, they didn't seem to have any real problem with each other. I don't know. But, yeah. He was pretty much the father of that kind of like gag comedy because like they started, they did a lot on Jackass and stuff with Bam and uh, pranking his dad and Phil or whatever. But Tom Green totally did it way before them. Well, Tom oh, yeah. Green was like, wasn't he like early not early mid? -90s? I was I was actually there for a sticky whiskey buttons when he had to drive everybody home because everybody was covered in whiskey. Nice. <laughs> so they rented an OC Transpo bus and they drove you to your house in the OC Transpo bus. <coughs> I have no idea what an OC transmit bus That's the city bus in Ottawa. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Cool. The Ottawa Carlton Transportation. Is Tom Green Man from Man. Ottawa? He is from Ottawa. He was originally three blocks away from where I grew up. Many years ago, I was... His family was right outside the slums. I lived in the slums. He was right outside of it. Many years ago, I was with my girlfriend in her hometown. It's I think it was Spanish, Ontario. And... Uh, there was this huge festival thing going on and I didn't feel well. So I didn't go to the dance at the end of it or whatever. And I guess somebody had a school bus and decided to be like the person and like was going to drop everybody off at home. And with everybody on the bus, including the bus driver was shit tanked. So oh, the well. cop, cops Thank pulled them over and like, yeah, basically find everybody. It was pretty funny. I was quite happy that I stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> like good times. This beer is pretty good. I don't know it's, it's it's less of a milkshake milkshake IPA than most other ones I had. I've had, I'd say it doesn't have that kind of. It's it's kind of thin, you know. It doesn't have really a, a bit of a. Oh, and, then, and then maybe geez. it's just gypsum, not flour. Maybe just Paul. Uh, well, it's it's let's lactose. It's got uh, water, malted barley, mango puree, hops, lactose, <clears> and yeast. Well, I'm so, going to tell you right now if they put gypsum in the beer, which is one of the things they do use to make it hazy, but it doesn't get as heavy as if you use uh, flour itself, they're not going to tell you they put drywall in your beer. I hope. Oh, love well, Actually, you know what? I wouldn't hope not. I hope that that wouldn't be a thing that really? would fucking happen. That's horrible. Oh, no. It ha gypsum happens in a lot of beer. I know that that law or whatever that's. I really hope that goes like that they have to start listing every goddamn thing in the beer. Because, mm. like, it's, it's fucking. It would be the, nice. Why isn't, like, that nutrition label that and every other beer fucking food beer, and beverage item in the country has. How does beer not have that? How is that? The only beer that does have it is things like uh, Nicolo Ultra. Nicolo Ultra, because they want to show you that it's low in 
in carbs. Glutenberg oh. is the one I was thinking of. I've tried that one, and it actually has that on there. Uh, the new yeah. repackaging of Steam Whistle has it on it, too. It's got the nutritional information and the, and the ingredients, which they oh. always have said they got Ran four ingredients. Randomly, Steam Whistle is going to be at the festival tomorrow, and they're bringing something besides their Pilsner. I can't remember. Are they, bring they might be bringing Steam Whistle Plus. No, it was... What? Which I I have never tried to this day, and I'm still. You can get it for free on. Aren't you like a yeah, walk away from the brewery. the brewery? It's actually pretty good. I know. I, I need to actually get my lazy ass. And aren't you a there, pretty though. big fan I'm of Steve Whistle? Ass. I am. I've tried some of their like I've tried their pale ale they made a few years ago. I don't know. If my my next sense. beer will be Pinwheel, which is a pineapple goza from Wellington. I oh, want from a sour party bag. Oh, that the punch one was got? really good. It, that's it, one of those, the four. There's four beers in that. Yeah, that's, that's the sour party pack. Nice. How have you tried them all or just that one? No, just these two. This and the punch. Are they both good? The punch sounds yummy. The punch was good. It wasn't as good as this one. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. This I think is better than the pineapple Uber from Nickelbrook. I'm not a big fan of the pineapple Uber. Uh, hence why that's better than the pineapple Uber. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you that. I and wish not, not as good as the raspberry Uber. Uh, no, still not as good as the raspberry you were. Okay, now, yeah, I'll, there we go. I wish they still had bottles of the Super Saison so I could get you one, just because I want to see a review where you just rant about it the whole for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, what was that, sorry? I said I wish I could get you a bottle of the Super Saison from Foley Brew Pub, which I can't because they're sold out of it. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, you, I would you, rant for you 10 would rant minutes. For 10 minutes right. yeah. I would go off on that beer. That beer would set me off. Fucking 10.9% alcohol saves all. Fuck you guys. Fuck you. <laughs> wow. Oh, here we go right here. I got the beer list. Steam Whistle is bringing Von Bugle, which is a Munich Amber Lager. What the fuck? Von Bugle? Yeah, that's what I thought. If, if, that is, if that is canned, not on tap, but it's probably going to be on tap. But if it's canned, you got to steal a can for me. Oh, and, <laughs> anything that's in cans, I will be going around. And well, that's the thing. Like the, 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 My kind of issue tomorrow. Is I'm the only one working the Highlander fucking tent tomorrow, oh, so yeah. uh, there's not going to be like I'm not going to be able to go around and do a bunch of vlogging and stuff. It's going to be like wow. at the end of the festival, as soon as I'm as soon as like whatever the time is happens, I'm going to be like I'm done. I'm leaving my fucking place and I'm going to every other place. I'm gonna, like no on, on like beforehand where I need to go to try the beers I haven't had and try to do like three or four oh. like. Post festival, still at the festival vlogs. Uh, what you need to do is you with know, all the you just need, you just need to make friends with some of the breweries that have more than one person, and they can go and grab you something. Whoever's no, beside or, you. Or, or well, but true, but again, that the guy from Highlander that uh, that I'm working for made a point of saying they had an issue where there, there was a brewer, there was a festival, and they only had one guy, and he was having a drink, and the liquor inspector was around, and okay. he was, there you go, you, that that tent's now shut down, you can't serve anymore. So uh, I don't want to. I don't want to fuck over a Highlander kind of thing. I'm really. Well, that that happened at my festival too. There was a couple of breweries that got yeah. in trouble for that. I actually had to confiscate. I had to confiscate uh, plastic cups. And Brian knows about these cups because me and him were doing reviews in them. The confiscated Great cups cup. from a certain breweries. Nice. nice. Uh, but yeah, like, no, yeah I like, took I, an I, entire I, sleeve. I'm like, I'm taking these and I'm going over here with them, and you're not getting them back. <laughs> but like, what I, you I, do I feel is like. like the... I feel you really do like a trick or treating honor. honor system, though, like where you just put a sign saying, "Just pour yourself a pour yourself a sample, leave a ticket." Yeah. And uh, you know what? Uh, like, like we're gonna be honest here. It's like it's like, you know, it's like the fat kids on Halloween. You can trust them. <laughs> uh, how about this? How about this news story? This is uh, a Czech beer is designed for cancer patients. A, nice. a brewing company in the Czech Republic has developed a non-alcoholic beer. That is specially formulated so that cancer patients receiving chemotherapy and experiencing <sighs> impaired taste can still enjoy their national beverage. For fuck's sake, if I, had, if, I, if I was dying of cancer and I had chemotherapy, the last thing I'd want is a non-alcoholic beer. For fuck's sake. I know, that's mm -hmm. right. Uh, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's like saying, hey, you know what? You're dying. Here's a blowjob from a man. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think that's a little different. Yeah. I expected well, see, a lady, the, the not Corey is, and Trevor. The thing is, so, so Mama Beer, Mama Beer is brewed using, few, and the name is Mama Beer. Mama Beer is brewed using fewer hops so that it is less bitter than regular beer because bitterness can be a component of dysgosia, which is an uh, the altered sense of taste that is common during cancer treatment. Uh, basically, you can't you, you you taste horribleness instead of what you're used to tasting if mm. it's bitter. 
Well, isn't the uh, the better solution to stop using radiation and find other solutions to get rid of cancer that aren't just like basically still killing the person anyway? Right. All right. Thank you, Dr. Redbeard. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not, I didn't stop. I'm not going that far. I'm just like, you know. I've, so, I've, uh, I, I've seen people that have been going through chemo and it's not, and it doesn't always work. It's like, it's kind well, of, it's, well, my, my dad had cancer 10 years ago. He went through radiation and then it cured him. So well, there, there you go. Work. But again, like they're, you know, I'm happy. I'm very happy that that happened. My, I didn't get that chance. Cancer took my dad, but that right. if there, if there could have been some other treatment for him that wasn't as horrible as chemo is kind of thing that do not think that would have been nice kind of thing you know because like and then uh well ideally if you had a pill to cure cancer that'd be great but tim just brought up something else too which is true uh which is in that news article which is all their profits are going to cancer research oh okay that that's good but did you guys see there was a was it Fortnite recently where they released a skin or something for somebody you had to pay money for uh, like I, I, I don't games. remember where it was. They yeah, raised was like good. almost three million dollars because that many people are playing these fucking games. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, here, here's a news article that I actually really like. It's five beer menu rules I wish all bars would follow. And we'll talk about these because some of these are actually really good. Uh, first and foremost, offer a beer list that isn't 75% IPAs. Fucking right. <laughs> fucking right. There are so many breweries that I walk in, well, bars that I walk into and they're like, we have 72 taps. 50 of them are IPAs. What the fuck is this bullshit? Or, you know, we have 12 taps or this, or we have we have 100 bottles. This is what we have. Why the fuck are there so many IPAs? I know, you know IPAs what? sell. I know right. IPAs sell. I get that. But you don't have to have fucking 20 IPAs on your menu. Depending, again, like, I, I'd agree. It doesn't have to be, like, the majority of the menu. I, myself, I, I'm a big IPA fan, but I... I myself, too. Yeah. And shit, but... The variety of different styles of IPAs kind of lends itself to a few more options. Sure, out there have, as well. have six but, or seven options, but, but again, don't have fucking no, fifteen. Yeah, again, like I said, if you got tw if you got twenty beers on your menu, make six, maybe seven IPAs, and then you got a and bunch. Then you can of have an APA, an yeah. IPA, a sour IPA, a right? Like you can have a bunch of different stuff. I don't give yeah. a shit about that. But they're like I I went I into Iggy's one time. Iggy's Iggy's has twenty five uh, twenty five taps. I went to Iggy's one time, and like fourteen of them were different pale ales. Fuck you! Oh, just, yeah. As fuck much you. as as much I as I love buy IPAs, forty two today. It has sixty five taps. I didn't see as, what they were, but as much as I love IPAs, like it is so difficult to get a good stout in exactly any place. Any place. Like it's like other than like maybe Guinness or something. Like it's stouts just don't seem to exist in restaurants for the most part. Right. Yeah, you're right. It's funny because Guinness is like one of the stouts I just really don't like. Nit nitro, nitro beers in general, man. I just I don't like a flat fucking beer. Like, oh my god! I, I, I can sit there and watch Guinness. I can watch Guinness. Like gonna hate you. I can watch Guinness. Oh like Cascade effect. I love it. I love the Cascade effect. It's fucking beautiful. But I don't. I just. I, I don't like a flat beer, man. It's just, Red Beard, uh, you weren't at the bottle show this year. Guess what? You're not going to be at the bottle show next year. <laughs> so the, the next, the next host, rule, you have the to next rule is saying, another rule like, I, really, I really agree with, and this is the one thing I can say Iggy does do. Uh, list the beer style, not just the name. And then their little, their right. little tidbit on here is really good, too. Uh, I might want to order local beer companies, Electric Kid and Revenge, but that name alone, absent any kind of description about the beer, doesn't give me anything other than a hunch about the drug preferences of a local beer company. <laughs> it's hard for me, let alone a beer newbie, to stare down a beer menu that only lists a beer's name and decipher what I might get. And it's 100% true. Uh, the yeah. greatest thing about Iggy's beer list is that it's just that. It's, it says the name, it says the brewery, it says the style. Sure. And that, that's great because, you know, there are times where I'm excited to try something and because I'm looking down the list and it's like a oh, mild. Oh my fucking God. You've never seen miles. Give me that. I want to try that. You know, like right. stuff like that. Or right. it's a Rattler. I love Rattlers. Give me a Rattler. You know? and, and an ABV would be nice, you know, right. Dude. Yeah. What? ABV would be nice too. Call it what you will. Tell me what kind of beer it is and give me an ABV. Uh, that way I know how many I can have. A couple of, uh, 
One thing a couple of bars do here is it'll actually have their tap list completely listed on untapped, and there's a they'll they'll print out copies of their tap oh. list from untapped so nice. they can display it at the bar. That's sure, one that, thing that's pretty cool. That's why using leveraging yeah. social media for displaying well, I, it. I know a few places where they have they'll have like a chalkboard and it'll right. change yeah. whatever and it'll yeah, be like and they, does that. Yeah, like a lot of places. Yeah, so does monks a, a lot of places are actually pretty good with shit like that. And I, I completely agree. Like I was at uh, even tonight when I went to that. Uh, I had that Bose crazy bread IPA at Greco's Pizza and Pasta here tonight. I was waiting for my sub to be made, and their beer menu, they've got beer from uh, Full Beard, and it tells you like the doesn't say the ABV, but they've got the name of the beer, and then they have the style of the beer there. So, mm -hmm. so so rule number three. Is another rule I completely agree with, which is offer a range of ABVs. Yep. Uh, there are a lot of times, uh, a lot of the exciting beers are seven to ten, or ten and up, uh, and then there's a big bunch that are in the five to seven. There's not as many under five, but I mean, you really should have a few choices that are under five, a couple choices that are five to seven, a couple choices that are seven to ten, and maybe one or two choices that are ten and up. Because you don't want to have a lot of ten and up choices, because you can't sell as many beers at that price at least uh, at that ABV yeah. here in Ontario, where you have to follow Smart Server, you get fucked. Um, <laughs> I have to follow what? What would you call it? Smart, smart Server. Uh, we, 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 we're, we're, we're a nanny state. When we go offline, I'll, I'll explain some shit to you again. Okay. Um, I have Smart yeah. Server for some reason. So do I. I so paid I. forty bucks. I got it. <laughs> I think um, I might free through one of the, one of the places I've worked But, here. I mean, that, that's the thing, right? Like, I would love to see, like, a 4% alcohol beer, a 3% alcohol beer, maybe a 4, 5, 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, a 10. I, I would love to see a, a place that has that. Like, uh, you go to my place of business, and our tap list is a golden lager, a golden lager, a golden lager, a golden lager, an IPA, a pale ale, and a golden lager. Nice. What the fuck? <laughs> like, Really? You know what? Here. I want to see a place that goes Here. like a three, three, three point five is uh, kind two of them aren't enough, macro. But yeah, I, want to, I, want to, I want to see a restaurant that has a three point five and then a four and then a four point five, like all the way up to like twelve. That's their yeah, that, that would be that, that would be like the great the rainbow of ABV and like because in there, this you'd start probably with like the lowest probably like a rattler or something. And then you move up like a session IPA or some kind of session ale, and then you get into some kind of regular lager, and then you move up. Oh, and you're going about it backward. No, no, no. You got to start the other way. <laughs> well, you, you, you got to start, start with the bourbon barrel aged. Yeah. Double. It doesn't have to be bourbon right. barrel aged. It doesn't have to be bourbon. It has to be bourbon. Right, so here's, just, here's I, I prefer whiskey barrel aged myself, to be honest. Here's the well, untapped. Uh, uh, tap listing over at the Cask and Kettle, which is on Prince William Street in St. John. 16 beers on tap. They have their entire list, and including what's new. Uh, you can actually see where it says new stuff that uh, that they they just put on tap. So they can like anything that just came out, you have a notification see, that, that's right a here. That's a great idea, right there. Yeah, but they'll have like this. In this case, they got a session IPA and IPA and IPA. Yeah, yeah. Shandy Radler. They have a Radler there. Kolsch uh, and an adjunct lager. Moosehead, of course. Pale ale, double. Uh, another pale ale, a red ale, Pilsner, another IPA, a sour, a cider, and a dry stout. You know what they yeah, need there? Dry stout, <laughs> Guinness. For, if they're printing that out and putting it on tables, yeah, they print that out and they there put it needs on the to table. be a fucking QR code on there so uh, people no, the tables can scan it and bring it up uh, and they, they, like, got, a, read they the got a co shit? coffee stout here too. Eleven C's espresso stout. What's up, Mister Sexton? Hey, fuckers. Uh, oh. Actually, Mister Sexton coming in is a great segue to this because I haven't posted these yet because we did them while we were sitting at Bench Brewing. But what Bench Brewing does is they give you a cue card with every beer that has the beer's ABV, what's in it, all that shit for each different style. Oh, he's got the pink shirt. Whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 he's oh, actually oh, wearing it tonight. Man, you have no idea. I, I would totally wear that shirt tomorrow working the beer fest if I had one. I got two of them in my truck. I think I'm going to wear my, uh, my hot pepper shirt tomorrow. To serve though, I think that'd be pretty fun. So, uh, just so you know, Ashley, Tina's a little angry because you took the size she needed. Oh, in the color she wanted. Well, she got a pink one still. Yeah, I apologize. Who's gonna get the black on black one though? Oh yeah, the black on black is. <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> fucked because somebody's gonna be like, "What does that shirt say?" And they're gonna get really close. You actually got black on black, man. Well, uh, when, I, when, I, when I get my free shirts, he go, he just prints them on whatever shirts he has available. Really? That's funny. 
black on black. That's fucking awesome. I don't know if you guys have asked, but what's everyone drinking? I am uh, about three quarters away through my Mangzaro. Okay, Nicholas, what are you drinking? I'm drinking our Rathman from uh, Unibrew. Oh, that's a nice beer. Oh, that's, that's one the, of the that's, that's the buckwheat beer, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that's the no, that's one. Like that's the that's last the one I have in my fridge. No. It's the smoke beer. Okay, uh, drunken one. What are you drinking? Oh, that dry stout, my good old dry oh, stout. Oh, okay. Uh, Brian, what are you drinking right now? Um, still working through the bottle of Quambois Belgian uh, Pale Ale. From you are slow as fuck, motherfucker. What are you drinking, Greg? I'm finishing off this can of Canuck, and then I'm probably going to have a little bit of Four Roses bourbon that I... Uh, and how about yourself I, I there, the Ashley? What are you drinking? I am drinking uh, Great Lakes Sunnyside Session IPA. Oh, awesome. Man. And I'm going to be going on to... I'm moving on to uh, Candle Burner Coffee IPA. Nice. I've seen pictures of that. that I wanted like you keep you're, you're trying a bunch of beers that I want to try that I can't get without paying shipping. Pissing me off. Your, your shipping cost isn't actually that bad compared to other breweries. Coffee. So that's Wellington. Yeah. Okay. I I, I looked at a few. I think it was like I think it was like twelve bucks for my box, and that's actually a reasonable price for. It might be a bit more to me, but. Still, like I like I thought the, the few I, 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 I got to right? most, most of their stuff are in small box, small cans, right? So it's a small box. That's that's true as well too. It's less weight. So, but like I was, gonna, I looked at Collective Arts, Half Hours on Earth. And... Half Hours on Earth makes a lot of their money through their shipping, uh, because most of their most of their sales are through the shipping. Because not many people live around Seaforth, Ontario. That's, no, that's this is true. Uh, yeah. So, so they get off on that. Uh, well, and just the price, like for a fucking three fifty five mil can. Some of their beers are, and even their bottles. And their I mean, bottles are those really prices, small. Those prices gradually kept growing, oh, and this man. is why I get angry about some of the people in the beer industry and in the in the beer world because they're just stupid that way. When the, he opened and he was selling in glass bottles, so he was selling at a, a higher cost than what he's selling at now. That stuff was actually a lot better price than it is now. And the reason it keeps going up in price is because people are fucking murdering each other to get to it. And they're like, hey, we'll pay $8 for a 355 milliliter can. What the yeah. fuck are you guys smoking? His beer is good. Well, Pile one of some uh, great beer. One of my fans, I can't remember, one of the guys that I, I, I gave my phone number to a fan at one point, but he messages me all the time. That wasn't a fan, that was a hooker. <laughs> but no, he's drinking, uh, tonight he had uh, something by Left Field, and it was... um. Like it's right up here somewhere, right? It, it looks kind of like a like a fucking liquid art fest. It looks really juicy, but it was uh, uh their whip smoothie pina colada milkshake IPA four fifty hmm. for a three fifty mil can, which is well, that's, well, here, that's fucking expensive, man. Well, here's the thing. I mean, it's it's, it's not the brewery. Sorry, sorry, Nico. Oh, he's just gonna at least it's less than five bucks. Go ahead. So, what Ashley was going to say is 100% true, though. Like, it's not the brewery's fault that somebody's stupid enough to pay it. Yeah, exactly. If, if, if you're going to pay it, the brewery's going to charge it. That's yep. what it comes down to. Absolutely. I mean, again, I think Kyle makes some great beer. Kyle makes some amazing beers. He makes some of the best sours in Ontario. Some of the prices on some of his beers are ridiculous. And that's the problem is beer, beer is going more and more towards wine because people are dumb enough to pay that price. Don't pay that price, and the beer prices come back down. It's like I won't, I won't pay. I won't buy point. anything from the exchange. I'm sure some people do, but I won't. Buy I anything. I have no problem going into the exchange, sitting down, and ordering by the glass. I have absolutely zero problem with that. I I'm will not a it right now. Well, I know you are, but I'm just saying, like, I will never buy a bottle and bring it home. I got a free bottle. Oh, that's the only time I bring a <laughs> bottle home is when Nick I would take me. a free bottle too. When Nick goes, "Hey Chad, you want to take a bottle home?" Sure, I'll take a bottle home and review it if you want me to. But I am not paying fucking fourteen dollars for a bottle of your beer. I'll pay five dollars for a glass of the same beer, but I am not paying fourteen motherfucking dollars for a bottle of it. You, you know what? Suck my if, fucking. If, if they, if the, one of their bottles of beer was like a thirteen <clears> percent <throat> crazy, amazing sounding imperial stout. If they're big enough bottles, then no, then it's, say, it's a it's a gold nail. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Right? Even if, if they were doing something like that, and like that, then I'd be like, you know what, that might be worth somewhere around the fourteen. But like for uh, some, like the one I had, it was like some 
Flanders red sour. Yeah, you, you took the most. You took the most expensive beer when he offered you a free one. Oh, you're damn right, I did. I know you did. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what I would do too. It was, yeah, was good. It was good. Was getting but, the free stuff. But but I mean, I, I'm with I'm with a lot of people on that. Like uh, I I love Silversmith's Black Lager. I never yeah. liked the price is going down, but good. when it first opened, they were selling that black lager for almost ten dollars a bottle. I yeah. love the black lager. Wow. I am not paying ten dollars for a bottle of the black lager. No, I will pay five dollars. I will pay five dollars for a pint of the black lager. I will not pay ten dollars for a bottle of the black lager. Really? <laughs> I brought one of those home and I, I don't think it was ten dollars I paid for it. I think you came I think you came around the second year and the price was started going down. I think it's down to like seven now. Something I think I paid like seven. Um, the regulars are five ninety nine, their specials are seven ninety nine a bottle. Yeah, so the prices have dropped okay. a lot. The prices were disgusting when they opened, and I, I think they were selling fewer and fewer bottles until the point yeah, where they had to I, lower the price. I'd have to say that you get a hard time saying that a block lager is a special. Yeah. I, have say, I have to say, I perpetuated the whole high a little bit with the Liquid Art Fest. I've bought in grand total probably around... Too much. Too much, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say maybe a two-fours worth Sure. since it's been out. But <laughs> someone who went more fucking Lysak and number five... Same price, and he bought way more of that beer. Uh, except the number five was so much better than Liquid Art Fest. Not better, but I'd say, mm. I, you know what? I like much Liquid better. Art Fest better. Sure. I, like much better. I like Liquid Art Fest better, but I will say that number five was a better value for money because it was 8.2%. It was number a double five IPA. Was all, number five was also a beer, whereas Liquid Art Fest was just like Grapefruit juice. Fruit <laughs> juice. <laughs> I, I won't deny it. It's, 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 it's juice. That's one of the things I love about that is that like you can do I, this. I will say I There's don't know so what many Ryan's going to do. do with beer. That's what, that's my thing. I love it. I'm so, curious what's going to happen to either Nickelbrook or Collective Arts when Nickelbrook opens up their giant facility in Niagara, because Ryan Moreau is not going to be able to take over both Nickelbrook and Collective Arts when both of them have a giant facility. One of those two breweries has to get a new brewmaster. Which one of them is it going to be? Oh, you had mentioned that. Like the one guy is is actually the brew the brewmaster for both fucking places. Eh? Yes, that's was uh, that Ryan Morrow's or something. Was it Ryan Morrow? Yeah, that guy. Yeah. That guy, guy has got to be like. And he runs his, he runs his own he runs his own brewing company, which is a contract brewer. He puts out like one beer a year as his contract brewery, but he still has his own. He has his own contract brewery. And wow. he is the brewmaster for those two. But when when that like fifteen million dollar brewery opens up in Niagara on the Lake, something's going to give, and which yeah. brewery is going to get hit with the loss? Because mm. both of those breweries are only as 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 sought after as they are right now because of him. Well, that's the thing. The one that keeps them. There's there's going to be like a fucking possible I, like a bidding war to like keep him kind of thing. Or like his, I'd almost think he, if he was smart, he should go to Collective Arts because they got a future. Well, more oh, of a future than Nickelbrook does. Shots fired. You know what? In my, I don't know. In I just like, opinion, like I, where I, the direction that Collective Arts is going. I would argue, I would I argue that Nickelbrook has a bigger future once this happens because what they're going to do is they're turning Nickelbrook in Burlington into nothing but funk beers, yeah, and they're sure. turning this, they're turning the new brewery into their production brewery. Don't they already and, have a funk place? The funk well, that, that that is the original brewery is, is their funk area, and they're doing all their main beers right now at Collective Arts because they technically have a 50% share of Collective Arts right now. Yeah. Christ, wow. So I because guess, they, so, they bought all the equipment at Collective Arts. All kinds Arts. of shit just going to go all crazy. Yeah, you no, know, it, 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 this, these two breweries are so intertwined that this new brewery is is wow. real intriguing about what's going to happen. I got to say myself, I... I I don't, I don't necessarily agree with Nick, like the other one has a future, but as far as well, the brewery from which I've had the most beers I have thoroughly enjoyed, I'm kind of on the collective arts side as well. I, what, what I mean is that I like collective the arts, I, I feel collective arts has got more of a future going forward because they're doing some really great things. Whereas Nickelbrook, I haven't really had anything that's wowed me from Nickelbrook in years. Oh. I don't know, man. No, I, I, I actually... But then again, I'm I'm an outsider, so fuck. I, I no, I actually do agree with Nick, but I'm not I'm not really a fun, I don't really like funk or tart beers or sour beers, so I, I agree. I haven't had anything particular exciting from them. Yeah. Uh, the only the only thing that I think is solid year to year is their Kentucky Bastard. Every year yeah. I'm impressed by that. But their Cafe de Bastardo, their Winey Bastard. You shut your mouth about the lack of co the Cafe de Bastardo was fucking delicious. 
I Red that. beard, just shut your mouth in general. You'll make everyone we else need to happy. do that for a beer I'll analysis one on one. Like that started. Uh, I'll be honest. Yeah, I, I, I still have. That, I can well, still get that at my LCBO. Really? You totally yeah. do that before it's yeah. all gone. Can you do it, Red Beard? I don't think so. I can double check, but I really doubt it. I think it's all like it, it was. We need, we need to pick light. one next week. So it's I also the option that Mad Tom just came in here. So. Well, you twice as mad. Mad. Do you have regular Mad Tom or just twice as Mad Tom? Yeah, but it's just old stuff. Uh, um, yeah, it's just like like several month old Mad Tom. Well, uh, we got mad Tom fresh, isn't super fresh hot. Twice as Mad Tom. Muskoka did tell me they they replied to me in a tweet one time that uh the dates because they are best before dates on their fucking cans they're yeah. six month best before dates not oh, not okay. a year so they're not as old as you might think but yeah. They're Let's reel this back in for a second. I love that we've gotten on this tangent and all this talk, but there Tangents is still, the best. There is still two rules. Oh, we were still in the middle of this fucking shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was uh, a tangent. Was it? That was like a half an hour long tangent. So, so if possible, offer different size pours. And again, I fully agree with that. You know, there are times where a smaller glass is nicer. Flights are great. I know bartenders hate flights, but flights are great. Even if you don't do a flight, a half pour, like an uh, 8 to 12 ounce pour instead of a... Like a small a mug, pour. a small mug and a full pour. Yeah. yeah, I mean... Uh, Chad, Chad just... I've, I've got, uh, I got... Hold on, sorry to interrupt you, Chad, but i got two things to say about flights that I'm very passionate about. Number one, I've been to a brewery, I believe it was Duggan's. They will only do flights on certain days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I believe. Uh, and then, then there's a lot of other places that will, that will only do pre-done flights where you can only get the four beers together or four beers together, but you can't pick your own. In both cases, fuck you, but guys. Dude, uh, you know what? I fully agree with you on yeah, that one. I, I do too. That, that, I've, I've never seen that. But uh, that's, well, that's horrible. Well, Duggan, Duggan's makes sense because Michael Duggan doesn't give a shit about his customers. Michael he's Duggan's like, a piece of shit. He is a piece of shit. So is his brother. <laughs> Michael Duggan and Chris yeah. Duggan, both fuckers. Fuck you both. Um, but yeah, that 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 disgusts me. That you know, oh no, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're too busy, so we're not going to do a flight. No, you you fucking do a flight if your fucking customer wants a flight. Because if you're not doing a flight for your customer, now you're now you're encouraging binge drinking. That's actually Duggins. illegal. <laughs> right. you, you know, you know, the, my favorite place is a place downtown called the Loose Moose, and they've got something like fifty taps. Now, granted, a lot of them are macro. There's probably about twenty of them are macro, but they do have a shit ton of craft stuff, IPA, they've even got a few stouts, some stuff from Europe. They're absolutely fantastic. And you know what they do? Every single beer they have, you can get in a pour. It's not even a flight. It's like you can just get a sample size. And you like the ra it ranges usually between 150 to two to three bucks for well, a I mean, sample size, depending what it that's is. A lot and of that's breweries that do that, right? And I wish bars would do it more. But yeah, like you go into Cayman Kettle and you can get a half pour of everything. You go into Loxer, you can get a sample of everything. Like that's the way things should be. Yeah. If you want to just try it, get to try it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I've got I've gone to Loose Moose and I've tried about ten to twelve different beers, and it only cost me you know twenty something dollars because they're reasonably priced, and I, I they still got my money. I still bought food. I still spent like seventy bucks there, but it was just like. You know, you allowed me to try different things rather than force me to have a pint exactly. or half pint of everything. Exactly. Right, right. And I mean, that's, that's what I hate about breweries that open up and don't can or bottle. Now you're only selling me crowlers or growlers. Now I have to, now if I go in and you have 12 beers, I can try a couple beers while I'm here, but now I have to pay like a hundred bucks to go home with the rest of your beers. Yeah. Did you, see you guys that? again. Yeah. Did you see how what, what if all they had was like those? What was, what was that, Ashley? Oh. I think. Did you see how expensive those crowlers are at uh, Bench now? No. How expensive were they? I wasn't reading. Four. Well, they they just uh, released the price. They're fourteen bucks. Ouch. Fourteen bucks for a fucking crowler. Fourteen that's, bucks for a crowler. Is that, is, that, is that assuming you don't own the crowler and you're like getting a new? No, a, cra a crowler's okay. the can. The can. can oh, the, the sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, can. I was thinking. Squeak or whatever fucking so small. Most, here, places are, house. most places sell a crowler for between, eight, between 8 and 10. 8 and 10, right. eight, eight and wow. ten is the normal yeah. crowler price in Ontario. 14 yeah. motherfucking dollars for a fucking crowler? Of, uh, like, wow. The bench beers are good. Don't get me wrong. The bench beers are good, but okay. I'm going to say this this way now. Fourteen dollars for a fucking crowler of that <laughs> shit. Like, Fuck what is that? Does it have like a double tempest in it or something? Like, no, there's no double tempest. It's, it's all the exact same fucking malt bill too. Like, we we were laughing because we <laughs> yeah. gave you the fucking card for everything. They're all the exact same fucking malt bill for the most part. It's just different amounts of fucking water and malts in it. Yep. it yep. It's all the exact same fucking color. It's all the same fucking hue. It's 
Every one of them has the same SRM value. Look at him go. Like, like, what the fuck? Fourteen fucking dollars. Chad's passionate. Okay. I guess so. Uh, my my random tangent was uh, Greg, that loose moose place you're talking about. I never even heard of that before. I used to work. There's a place in here, North Bay. It's not called that anymore. It's like still the same owner, but there's like a thing where like if you change the name of your business every few years, you can like reset some kind of tax or some kind of shit and he was doing that for a while and when i first started it was moose's loose chains lodge which i feel he may have stolen from that place or vice versa it's kind of funny <laughs> I'm, I'm so that, that, right now. That, it went from that to moose's and scotty's to something uh, and now it's now, now it's moose's big game sports bar i asked my wife if i could if i could change her nickname to the loose moose and she slapped me <laughs> <laughs> right hi, hi chat how are you Oh uh, yes, uh, I'm good. Are you drinking yeah, anything, Chuck? Uh yes. Uh a uh go to of mine, uh Pat Blue Ribbon Beer. Video uh, Okay, before we get on to rule five, the last rule of this news article, I am drinking <coughs> Outcast Brewings last yeah. uh last last minute stout. Last minute stout has vanilla, hazelnut, and chocolate. Mm. That's a cool label. Put the label up again. It's a fucking Tyrannosaurus Rex, man. And he's doing <laughs> what? Like, he's with don't worry about what he's doing. He's enjoying himself. Okay. He's got a piece of bread. I think it's toast. Enjoy himself. <laughs> it's toast. toast. It is toast. It's toast. It's he's funny. putting Nutella on his toast. There you go. That's what it was. Okay, that's cool. Because see, uh, it, it doesn't tell you what it is, but it's basically Nutella. It's fucking vanilla, hazelnut, and chocolate. Now, with uh, a small uh, arm, do you actually there. reach to do no, that? No, he can't reach, okay? <laughs> he has to basically lick the... It's like this. Have you ever tried to do something like this? It's... <laughs> I I do do it where everything I do, my arms are stuck like this. I'm going to do a review like this. Uh, I feel I want to do that. If shit was falling apart in their kitchen and like people just need to like cheer up, you ever, you've seen Whose Lines Anyway calling Mockery's Dinosaur Impression? I would do that, but use two pairs of tongs as my arms and walk around the kitchen just... <laughs> No, don't, don't. Oh, sorry. Not sorry. the screen. Oh, dear, oh, dear oh. fucking God. Sorry. The pterodactyl <laughs> call just almost came out there. Sorry. Oh, it didn't come out. What are you talking about? I'm pretty sure that's no, the it, noise. It could have been a lot louder than that. My, 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 my throat is dry. I need more beer. This is why you're single. Ah, quiet. Is my throat dry? Or can I do the pterodactyl call? Hmm? I should try to do the pterodactyl call in the middle of like a busy bar some night. That'd be sweet. That's uh, we we have a we have a lady at work who when she laughs it's basically a pterodactyl call so I yell at people that make jokes in the bar she's in shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> when she comes I, in somebody's making a joke and it's like <laughs> wow. I've worked for some people that have like the one chick at the bar she it was like it was like a uh, the nanny friend dresser kind of ha <laughs> like just. Oh, you, you didn't want to make, <laughs> want to make a joke around her because you didn't want to make her laugh, kind of thing. <laughs> oh my God! Hello, Jamie. Uh, let's see. Uh, comments going on right now. First off, raining on your parades here. He's drinking a Sculpin IPA from Ballast Point. Good day, raining on your parade. Ewart's not here, so uh, I'll, as much as I don't want to do it, just because Ewart isn't here, I'll do it. Fuck you, raining on your parade. No, 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 no. Who cares this shit, right? Um, <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I think we'd all rather say fuck uh, you. To Oswald, you a growler right? refill is one point eight nine liters of fluid. Yes, but a crowler is nine hundred and fifty milliliters. A crowler is the giant can. Yeah. Uh, a crowler machine costs about fourteen hundred dollars. Uh, unfortunately, right now all the cans have to be ordered from the U.S. Uh, there's no place in Canada that makes the crowlers yet. That's uh, true. But you're still you're looking at about. You're, so you're looking at two pints of beer. At, it's, at, it's the same basically as a as a as a as a howler, isn't it? Basically, uh, yeah, basically, yeah, same, same size. Same size. size. So what, what I'm, well, what it's I'm in saying, a can, so it stays looking, a bit fresh. You're looking at yeah. 950 milliliters, and you're looking at about 85 cents a can as of right now. Jeez, uh, but with with crazy. the tariffs on it, who fucking knows what they are now, right? Yeah, who knows? Uh, too, yeah. But, yep. but originally they were about 85 cents a can if you were buying one skid at a time. Uh, most places that have a crowler machine are buying them one skid at a time because of the fact that they don't have room to put up more of them in, which is fine, whatever. But at 85 cents a can, you're filling two pints in it. You're looking at about $4 is what you have involved in, in liquid and can. Uh, so you're making 10 bucks a fucking crowler right now. You're $4 more a crowler than anybody else. Again, fuck you. I almost wonder if, if, if Bench is... 
suffering from the tariffs since they, they they're probably just starting to buy their their uh, their cans and stuff, right? You say the tariffs are actually surprised. Yeah. They're affect they're affecting the company I work yeah, for. The, the so, chemicals, so, the the chemicals that we buy to make the degreaser that we use are being yeah. affected somehow, which is oh. fucking crazy. Yeah, but. I, I nice. doubt it's, it's affecting it four dollars worth. So yes. Well, so no, it, probably, probably more. Is, probably yeah, more. Yeah, I was going to say something about the crawlers. We, sorry. We pay a lot yeah. more, so it's probably yeah. bigger. Go, Nick. Go. Yeah, go. I was going to say something about the crawlers. My, uh, Moosehead just started doing crawlers last week at their small batch brewery. You probably noticed that I drank one last two beer mm -hmm. uh, post ounces. Anyway, uh, they only charge nine bucks for these. So, I mean, what's the going rate elsewhere? Because uh, the only other place in New Brunswick that actually does crawlers is Greystone up at Ferrington, and I don't think their beer's more than yeah, 10. Uh, uh, any, anywhere, from, anywhere from 8 to 10 is normal Ontario. Yeah, yeah, I heard yeah, somebody nine, say, I heard nine somebody nine say 14. Totally 14 yeah. is Bench. Yeah, bench. Nine, nine's a great deal. I'd buy that. Bench is, selling, bench. bench is selling them for 14. Yeah. And that's, what, that's where my rant went off, because Bench is using the exact same but, fucking hop and grain grain bill for almost every one of their beers they are buying these things in such such fucking huge amounts that they're probably getting a fucking budweiser type of fucking price on them okay uh you walk into their you walk into their funk side and they have fucking full 15 fucking barrel uh folders and shit like that i'm sorry you're buying your shit at such a large volume that there is not one bit of iota for it to be a 14 dollar fucking crowd right. But like you said, like you said, Ashley, they might be getting hit with tariffs right now. I don't know what the price would be on that. Maybe maybe a dollar twenty a can now instead of eighty five cents. Well, four, fourteen dollars a crowler. Who do you think you are at the exchange? I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure Dave. Whoa, Dave me and Nick. If we ask, Dave on the exchange again. Well, I'm going to go. Well, Dave is trying not to do crowlers as much. He's trying to use the mobile canning line more now. Well, it makes sense. Well, he's he's doing that with his core lines, right? So I mean, yeah. it makes more sense. But you're right. If I if I went to the Cayman Kettle and I asked Dave, he would tell me. Actually, I'll send him a text message right now and see if he answers. I I I'm, I I feel that for, from the last few times I've been to the Cayman Kettle, and I'm sorry, this is more like a two person conversation. But um, I I think he's just emptying the the rest of their kegs into the crowlers j just to kick the keg. Something yeah, else. that's that is something he's been doing. Uh, one yeah. second, I'm doing a uh, voice to text right here. Uh, good day, Dave. Penis, penis, penis. Are, are you getting hit with any tariffs on your crawlers right now? What is a crawler per unit currently? Penis. There we go. We'll see if he answers. <laughs> He'll answer the he point. might he might be drinking right now though so he I mean might, he he might uh, so number it. five number five don't sacrifice quality for locality and I fully agree with this uh, so basically it's saying don't just take local because it's local get quality uh, now this really sinks home if you are living somewhere like say Simcoe where blue elephants there blue elephant on every can they say local just tastes better. Well, local just tastes better if you fucking know how to fucking brew, you pieces of shit. Now, what they do is they have a they have a brew house that has a shitload of fucking faults. Their brew house cannot keep temperature. Their brew house can't reach a proper temperature. Every single can of their beer is filled with movie theater popcorn yeah. flavor, like the buttery yeah. flavor. Uh, yummy, 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 yummy. They're like, here's our strawberry lager. It's strawberries and butter. Here's our stout. It's it's chocolate and butter. Here's our, like, fuck you guys. It doesn't taste better because it's local. It tastes better if you know how to fucking brew. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Shit on them. Hey, I went in there. I went in there. They had 22, 22 beers, 22 different beers. And that should have set me off right there, that they have 22 beers in this small little place. If they're making 22 different beers, there's a problem when the place is as small as it is. But you know what? I was like, give me a can of each and give me two cans of these two so that I get my two for. The two for cost me 85 motherfucking dollars, and every single fucking can tasted like movie theater butter. Fuck you guys. Local doesn't taste better when you fucking buy it at, at Blue Elephant. Fuck you. Wow. I can't wait. Saw that city just installed a new uh, tap line up here. They have 18 taps now at Sawdust City. But they're, they're, they're a big operation. Who's Sam's head brewer right now? I mean, Sam's still the brewmaster, but who's the head brewer there? Because Spinney opened, Spinney opened his own brewery. He's part of Merit. And he was the head brewer, you're saying? Yeah, he, was the, he was the head brewer at, uh, at Sawdust before him and, him and Taj opened up Merit. I don't know. Like, I'm not. Hmm. I, 
I, I wish that I was like anytime I go there, it's like usually I'm like passing through and I don't have any time to really hang out and stuff. And Sam, I, Sam is I, awesome. Uh, no, I, I, I've met him, but like not not like to hang out and like actually take like a personal kind of thing or any cool shit like that. But, Who the fuck is calling me right now? No, I'm not answering that. Oh, wow. was, what what the what hell is your ringtone? Ring what kind of fucking ringtone was that? It's a fucking mm -hmm. Irish song. Leave me alone. Is that what that was? <laughs> All right, I'm uh, getting it's into Irish my song. That didn't sound like the Clancy Brothers to uh, me. Right, right you know what, Chad? You like that? You know what? It was somebody from here in Niagara because it was a two eight nine number. Who the fuck is calling me at eleven o'clock at night? Chad, randomly, there's a band that I found not too long ago. I've been on this like the medieval metal kick kind of thing. We're like. Kind of heaviest band like bagpipes, all that kind of medieval shit. A band called Corvus Corax. I suggest you look them up. They're actually quite quite. Corvus good. Uh, Facebook Corvus is to me Corvus. so that I remember to I check like, out. No, I'm randomly like, I'll just like give you like a little kind of taste of it here in a second on my phone. No, <laughs> don't don't. Oh, you know, yeah, that's valid point. Valid point. Valid point. Valid point copyright. Facebook it to me. I'll do it. I, I don't need any more copyright strikes. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Need any more copyright? Strikes. Yeah. If we, if we go offline, if I'm still around, we go offline. I, I can roll that. I'm, I'm thinking 11:30 max. I gotta fucking wake up for that beer festival. Yeah, yeah. No worry. I got. I gotta. I gotta uh, wake up for a beer festival. I'm working a beer festival though. That's fine. I'm not working. I can drink all everything I want. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't want to, though. I have to be somewhat responsible tomorrow. Tomorrow. Not there's there's Mike, not when there's a three-hour bus ride involved and the only bathroom's in the back of the bus. I kind of want to, you know, not to go too crazy for this festival. So uh, anyway. here's a great one. Yeah. I, think you'll, I think you'll like this one, Nick. So local, brewery dodge, local breweries dodge provincial sales limits to launch Jared Corneau, uh, Como, sorry, beer. Jared Como? With, yeah. Gerard Como, yeah. Gerard Como with hopes of going national. Uh, two local breweries on opposite sides of the Ottawa River, so one in Quebec, one in Ontario, are launching a new beer on Thursday that they con concocted together. After finding a way to sidestep provincial liquor sales restrictions so the beverages can be sold in both Ontario and Quebec. One of the businessmen behind the new libation named Ger Gerard Como, in honor of the man who spent five years challenging provincial liquor laws in court, said he also plans to ask other breweries across Canada to hop on board so the beer can eventually be produced and sold in every province and territory in Canada. The owner of Ottawa's Flora Hall Brewing and Gatineau's Brasseur de Boss Canada say the project was first and foremost about creating a new and cool style of beer, but they say they hope their partnership with will simultaneously make a point about alcohol sales and distribution limits. And how they affect both businesses and consumers. Wasn't didn't some premier or something say a couple days ago that they want to start a coalition between the provinces or something to get rid of that whole fucking bullshit? There is a lot of uh, what well, we're going to go on. Uh, that. I heard it's something. The Manitoba yeah. premier that you're talking about, and that is one of the news articles I have open. There we go. Uh, nice. It's a super dry brute IPA. Oh god. Oh yeah. See, fucking. I had I had one today. at The Bose brute. Just my mom's a Brett IPA. Sorry, what the it, fuck? It, it'll have it'll have the nose of an IPA, but the mouth feel more close to sparkling wine. Mm. Weird. Mm. My way, the one I had was just all funk, and it was like it was too much. I like my sour to be sour, not funky. I'm not that. Mm, yeah. mm. I like how there's so many craft breweries jumping on this. How, even though he was bringing back like a bunch of cases of like Coors Banquet and shit. <laughs> he wasn't buying your it's beer. Principle. No, he wasn't. No, I know. I know it's the principle. I I get that, Nick. I'm just I'm just. Being yeah, I know, I know. I know. But it's not like he was buying craft beer or anything. But it's 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 also affects the craft beer drinker uh, in New Brunswick and across Canada because all the cool stuff in like say Ontario, I can't just get it in uh, New Brunswick or or legally bring it back in quantity. Which is stupid because this is fucking Canada. What is the limit between provinces that you're allowed to bring? Uh, do you have that, that in front of you, Chad? Province you're at. Because what um, I what, what was it? one or two cases for New Brunswick to Quebec. Quebec to Ontario. Quebec to Ontario, it's something like four. It's four oh, that's cases. okay. Because I was because when I went there with Marcel recently and bought a shit ton of horribly expired. That's, a, that's the thing, right? Like the, the biggest <laughs> argument is the fact that we should have open trade between provinces 
because yeah. that is part of the part of the constitution. But secondly, yeah. secondly, that each province has its own limits. Yeah, that's it's it's. And it's then, I mean, it's you, know, you have you have New Brunswick here that won its fight about crossing the border with beer, but you have Alberta that lost its fight about stopping beer from entering the province by taxing it. Like it's weird that that every side you go to, there's something different happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's ridiculous. Like they should the beer across the fucking country should basically just be like open and like kind of central. Every, everybody's basically around the same price for the same beer kind of thing, unless you're being some kind of exchange brewery and overpricing yourself, you know. But I, I posted up in the little thing on the side there how much the bottle I What the fuck is that? I don't know what's happening right now. Yeah, but, uh, you me. Um, uh, I was just saying, uh, uh, Chad, I did send you that link. I put a. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Thank you very much. That that that's that's one of my favorite songs by them. Even though they're they're German, but in, in, they, this is an English song, and it's called Twilight of the Thunder God, and they sing it as Twilight of the Thunder God. They can't say thunder. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious, but the, the music is great. <laughs> they can't say thunder. It's, it's, it's hilarious. Twilight of the, th uh, so, the thunder. So the, thir the thirsty wench posted a new article today. Thirsty wench being Robin LeBlanc. Hello, I'm Robin LeBlanc. Hello, I'm Robin. So Robin LeBlanc being somebody I know who is a uh, published author here in Ontario a couple times over uh, with Jordan St. John. Uh, and when she Game introduced herself, uh, when she introduced herself to me, even though we had been talking forever, she's like, "Hi, I'm Robin LeBlanc," and that's what Chris went off on for like three weeks. Uh, but she posted a thing about uh, about the new beer industry rules that are coming out, and I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff on here. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, first and foremost, macro being a big seller is no need to be fatalistic, and it's true. Uh, Macro is going to be a big seller. Macro is always going to be a big seller. It doesn't matter. Don't sit there and go, oh, my God, macro is a big seller. Who gives a shit? Uh, average drinkers have better taste than you think, and it's it, that's true as well. The average drinker does have better taste than you think. Uh, overnight, 100% conversion to craft beer is rare, uh, and again, 100% true. I mean, it took us forever to get Lachlan to drink craft beer. Uh, he's still not at 100%. Chris still will drink his Coors Light. Uh, there, are, you know what, and if that's what you like, you like that. I mean, I like Old okay. Vienna. I'm not 100% craft because I do buy a case or two of Old Vienna here and there. Uh, something I've learned in all my time in the service industry, if you're an asshole about something, that's the easiest way to turn somebody away from it. So if you go out and you're like, no, you're an idiot for drinking this, guess what? They're not going to drink your stuff. They're going to keep drinking their stuff because they're like, this guy's a fucking piece of shit. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be a dickhead. And that's that's why I get in fights with other other cicerones. It's the reason I get in fights with other beer judges. It's the reason I get in fights with so many people in the industry. If somebody wants to drink Coors Light, let them drink Coors Light. If somebody wants to drink craft beer right out of the can or right out of the bottle, let them drink it right out of the can or right out of the bottle. If if this yeah. style of beer should be drank out of a fucking tulip glass and they want to drink it out of a pint glass, shut the fuck up and let them drink it out of a pint glass. If they want to drink it ice cold and it should be drank at 15 degrees, let them drink it ice cold. Let them drink however the fuck they want to drink it. Yeah, man. I yeah. Cheers. Preach, preach, brother. Preach. Cheers for that. Yeah, cheers. It, for it, that. All it does is cause problems. All it does is cause animosity. All it does is prove that you're a piece of shit. Let the people be what who they want to be. Indeed. I want to be a pilsner. Be a motherfucking pilsner. <laughs> Are you gonna be the big or small dildo pilsner? The big one. And it's super fresh. Oh, steam whistle. Uh, does that have the new? Uh, turn it around. Does that have the elk? Does that have the uh, the nutritional info on it? Uh, no, there's no nutritional info. Brian told uh, us the nutritional info was on it. Did you lie to me, Brian? I never said the nutritional info was on it. I just ch said they changed our logo. Yeah. Somebody said something about nutritional info. Somebody said the nutritional info. Maybe it was, was Greg because he was gone for a while. He just came back. But, yeah. Yeah. Greg, was it you? I, I, I thought maybe he'd gone to bed and the camera on. No, no, no. I said something. I was just bugging my wife. Uh, no, I said something. Steam Whistle has nutritional info now. But Ashley just said <laughs> You probably can't. See. Well, yeah, you can see it. This was packaged two days ago. Yeah. So that's the one thing about them is they, they direct deliver to the LCOs, and they are quick on it. Uh, and that stuff tastes amazing when it's fucking fresh, uh, especially if you get it right off the line. If you go for the tour, you get a can right off the canning line. It is fucking fantastic. 
This has a really, to try that. like two days, like two days old. It's a really woody, really earthy pilsner. I mean, yeah. yeah, and the only the only problem with Steam Whistle right now is Merrick retired. Uh, Merrick sort of he still goes in and does stuff with them, but not not Steam Whistle itself. He does their like side jobs. Uh, Merrick was a brewmaster. Now, Steam Whistle is known to be a Canadian version of Pilsner Urquell, the original recipe of Pilsner Urquell, but they Canadianized it with Canadian barley and Canadian hops and this and that. Uh, Merrick was the brewmaster at Pilsner Urquell for a long time before he was brought over here. So he is amazing at what he does. He knows how to make a Pilsner really, really well. And he makes a Pilsner really, really well. And now he makes... He, uh, their, their new brewery they just opened up because they just opened up an experimental brewery. He's the brewmaster there, which is funny because he retired and then they brought him back. And he is the guy that he is the guy that is famously known there for pissing off the owners because he went on a interview and he told them there's five ingredients in their beer and they're sitting there on the sidelines going there's fucking four what the fuck's he talking about and the interviewer is like what five ingredients are there and he's like water. Barley, malt, malt, hops, and love. Sorry, uh, bar, 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 uh, sorry malt, malt, hops, yeast, water, and love. Wait, yeah, so love. That, that's, that's a lot of people one. ejaculating into beer to make all the steam whistle. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why the unfiltered version is so there hazy. You right? There you, yeah. go. there you go. It's funny, though, you're talking about like people coming back. I, I, when I was in high school, yeah, exactly. my people metal shop teacher was this Scottish guy named Mr. Hurry. And he was like Scottish to the point where you could barely even understand what he was saying. But he was an awesome, awesome teacher. And when I was in high school, he was an old, oldish looking man. Like he was probably, you know, like not too far away from retirement. And like maybe five years ago, through the hood cleaning company I do, we got the contract to go back and clean the high school in Perry Sound and do their hoods. And we were there and we had to do a thing in the, uh, the metal shop. They have an exhaust hood for their one fucking whatever they, something has a, hood we had to clean it and we're in there and mr the hurry's fucking there because he's the only person in the area that they know that can actually work on these like late the metal lathes and all these like super old machines in the shop so they bring him in to like repair them and stuff and he remembered me it was actually pretty cool normally if i want my comeback i just scrape it off red beard's teeth but that's interesting that's, that's why why do you have to be so disgusting all the time? All the because time. It's what I do. Well, I, I've never you met Greg. I, 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 I've <laughs> never met Greg. That's the that's the stuff to fuck that. Like this this insult, whatever you're trying to make right now, makes no sense at all. We've never met. We've never had a chance <laughs> to coat my teeth, let alone scrape anything. Never met that you know of. Maybe yeah, it was we, a glory hole. No, that, no, that, that's what yeah. Greg, Greg, Greg drives Maybe it was a Greg, glory hole. We, we, we never met while you were conscious. Sneaks into my house while I'm sleeping and does all this while I'm asleep and then just leaves. And I just I just unload into your mouth and then yeah. And then I scrape go. it off. <laughs> and then take the it, time. unload and bring it and then take it back and then leave. Like, no, I only scrape it off if I want it back. I'm not saying I necessarily want it back. It's it's oh. more of a like I'm just saying it's more of a specific scenario. This is the best <laughs> live stream that's ever been on YouTube. No, no, this is the yeah. worst live stream that's ever been. So <laughs> let's jump into the viewer comments again. Uh, it's been a while since we've been over here. Uh, so first and foremost, we have Basement Beer Reviews. 85 cents a can is crazy. The only place I know close to me that does Crowlers is Jackass Brewing in Cambridge. I have to go to Cambridge to that brewery just because its name is Jackass Brewing. I've been meaning to go there for a while. Cambridge is too far of a walk for me, so it just hasn't happened. Uh, Oswald's Twitter. Reef, it's like, uh, what do we have? Uh, basement Beer, does the beer store give refunds for... I don't think they do refunds for Crowler cans, Jamie. I they don't do. think they do. Do they? They, do. they uh, do. They give me five cents a Crowler. Five cents a Crowler? That's, wow. that's not bad, I guess. That's I mean, nice. it's still better than zero cents a Crowler. Uh, what do we have? Beer lasts relatively here. long for heat consumption. Uh, uh, that actually... You know what, uh, Oswald? Because you're in Winnipeg, I'm going to say this. That looks like the alcoholic cost writing that. Uh, you probably want to, you know, not do that. Uh, Jamie is eighty percent craft, maybe ninety. Uh, what the fuck is Redbeard posting right now? And what do we have? Albino, Canada. you do not have a review for Dogfish Head Higher Malts. Sorry, Higher Math. So I assume you have not had the beer. You're right, I haven't had the beer. It's a chocolate cherry, seventeen percent beer. It was only made once, about three. Why would you bring that up? I kind of want it now, motherfucker. Um, yeah. 
I actually, basement beer is, I actually find macro drinkers to be dicks more usually. They never want to try anything new and think you are a weirdo because you don't drink the same cheap beer every time. Uh, you see, I understand what you're saying there, but I've found it to be the opposite way. A lot more craft beer guys being dicks. I think for the, for the macro guys, they become dicks retaliatory wise. Uh, they try to stop themselves from drinking the big stuff. Well, the smaller stuff because people have been dicks to them before, and then they become like raccoons. <clears throat> in a corner of the I, right? often, ma- often, macro guys just they, they don't necessarily give a shit, they just uh, they like what they like. When you try to get them to drink something else, they're not interested. It's whereas craft guys will get really offended if you don't actually drink what they like. Uh, Tim drinks Bud Light every day, and that's perfectly fine. Tim, you want to drink Bud Light every day, drink Bud Light every day. I'm not going to do it, but you can. It makes more Bud Light for you. Uh, Bud Light, not the worst fucking macro beer out there. Not the worst out there. Uh, what do we have? Raining on your parade. Fresh, it was a nightmare, but with two and a half years, it is like chocolate-covered cherry brandy. One of the Raining on your parade, I'm gonna, I am I said last time I was saying this as a joke because of you were, but fuck you, Raining on your parade. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Uh, <laughs> fuck you. Also, Oswald fuck you, is fuck I love one. beer. Yeah, fuck, fuck you or two. Uh, damn, y'all sick. Get a woman. Uh, actually, Tim Craig, I have has, a wife. Craig has a wife. Uh, just 11, 11 years we've been together. How does that work? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Kindred spirits in this case. I jammed like half. I jammed like half a lime sliced into a double Heineken yesterday. Wow, thirty-two Celsius was like heaven. That's a, that's a lot of lime in the in a, lot, in a small beer. A lot of lime in a small beer. A whole lot of lime. Hey, hey, Ashley, what what shirt are you wearing? Oh, rub it in, rub it in. Mango. My sweaty in my sweaty gray. I have the same shirt. I I am so jealous. I am literally so jealous of you fellas right now. I have one specifically for you in the box I, back there on the couch. I, I must come up to Niagara on Sunday. I must. But instead of rhinos, it's actually two big dildos with legs on them. I don't care. I'll take, I'll take it. I'll take it in the ass, bro. Uh, so the last news story we have is the one that was talked about earlier. It's Gallant calls for a freer flow of beer across provincial borders. A border story. Manitoba Premier writes letter saying restrictions should be eliminated. He's 100% correct. Uh, now he is fighting more about uh, he is fighting more about the Alberta tax than the New Brunswick uh, New Brunswick Quebec thing, but uh, yeah, uh, everybody to that degree though. It's Supreme Court of Canada that made the decision. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the stupid, stupid decision. Like my God. Yeah, protect the status quo. Yeah. Randomly, uh, Greg, this is what I was showing before. The tiny, tiny baby is my new nephew. The other one is a regular sized newborn baby. Wow. Yeah, he's he's tiny, tiny. Is he premature? Uh, no, he just was tiny. (laughs) He was actually like, uh, I think a week late. Oh wow! But yeah, it's fucking. So those those are your sister's kids or something? Uh, one's the tiny one is my sister's kid. The other one is one of her friends' kids. Uh, Okay, just some rando baby. Yeah, just Uh, a uh, rando baby. So her boobs must be pretty good right now, eh? With filled with milk. That is weird. Like, it's like talking to a great cousin. Okay. I, I'm just saying it's not incest if you wear a condom. Uh, I think it still is, actually. Jesus Christ. Fucking, <laughs> fucking <laughs> bad. That, 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 Greg, that, that, was, that was pretty bad right there. Like, that was pretty bad for you right there. That was fucking pretty bad. That, that was that was, I can't believe uh, after like the year and a half you've been talking to Greg, you haven't learned not to show him pictures of a woman, yeah, especially I, when she's pregnant. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't show any pictures. I showed a baby. Yeah, that's enough. That's I showed the result of the pregnant woman. That, that baby that's what it comes to. Greg is the most disgusting womanizer in the world, and you showed him the picture of the baby, which makes him his mind go, ooh. Ooh. Why would involved. you do that? You know not to do this. Uh, <laughs> just, just feeding the bridge troll. You are. You're feeding a bridge troll, and that, that's what it comes down to. You're feeding the bridge. You know what? My next beer is going to be uh, this beer here. I think I, actually, I've, before, I've reviewed it before I because I just opened it. Right. This is from Stack Brewing. The man, uh, toss, right. the man toss, the he throw, the lad lob, the boy chuck. He brought this to me. This is Puppers. 
which is the Letterkenny beer. I've never actually watched an episode of Letterkenny. I probably should really? get that. Oh, right. I haven't either. I haven't either. I've actually, because I do a lot of jobs in Sudbury, I've driven past a lot of locations that are on that show. It's kind of cool. And it's actually like uh, the last, there's a new season out. So, I haven't well, done Letter Kenny, watched it. Letterkenny is sort of like the, the Ontario version of Trailer Park Boys, but it's more Hicks than Trailer Parks. I'll, I, that's the well. There's there's a the Hicks to this. Kid. There's like a bunch of different factions. Like it's it's surprisingly akin to like what it was like in high school when I grew up, kind of thing. Uh, now another thing that people have said is the Ontario version of uh, Corner Gas, and I've never watched Corner Gas either. I watched maybe an episode or two. I wasn't a big fan, but I I could see how that would because that that was like the Prairie version of Trailer Park Boys kind of thing. So that makes sense. But so Canada uh, has has three TV shows. And they're all just the same show, just different. Uh, yeah, different areas of the of, yeah. the, of the country. Yeah. You, have the prairie, oh, you have the prairie, yeah. the trailer park, and you have Ontario. There you go. Corner gas. As I say, Letterkenny is like corner gas and trailer park boys getting together and having a baby. Right. Like I said, the, the last the last season I just watched. I have there's a new season I haven't watched yet. But the last season I watched, I think it was season four. They kind of went a little bit overboard with some of their jokes like they overplayed some of them in a pretty big way i found like there's a thing where like somebody won't like a certain word someone's saying and then they'll put that word into a bunch of different stupid phrases and stuff for like a minute and they yeah. did that in like every single goddamn episode but i don't know the first couple seasons are fucking gold. Gold. and again like i haven't done my review puppers yet i'm gonna start it though if you haven't watched the episode, you'll get it when, I, when you watch the episode. I'm going to start. There's a, like a field kind of behind me. I'm going to be holding Oreo, my dog, in my hand. And I'm going to be sitting there with the glass. Oreo is not your dog. It's your giant rat. Let's Shut get it right. Mouth. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. My I'm fucking, go, my fucking eight-day-old puppies are almost as big as Oreo. You know what? Oh, shit. My, my, my rat is still a dog by all fucking classifications of the goddamn thing, so whatever. But anyway, I'm going to be holding... Your beard is bigger than your dog. Your beard is bigger than your dog. Yeah, I'm going to be holding my less than my beard fucking rat dog, and I'm going to be I'm gonna be like, so I've got a can of puppers today, and then that's going to go into the vlog. And if you've seen the show... It's gonna. Be it looks. Cool. It looks like it's a golden retriever. That that has no play on the show at all. Like, he, Puppers. He's, it's a golden retriever. No, I know, but that's not a reference. Maybe, to the show maybe at all. a golden lab instead of a golden retriever. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah my lab. wife is probably lab. gonna steal one of your puppies on Sunday. I'm just throwing she that out. There. She can't steal one of the puppies. It'll die. It'll it'll be dead. They're so cute, though. Oh my god. Well, we'll, we'll get a, We'll get a wet no, pu Puppies story. have been rescued at like earlier ages than yours and still survived. There, it's going to be living with Greg and Agnes. That, that's about why I don't know Agnes, but the, I, can speak, the, I can speak for the whole Greg thing. That that's no, no. The thing is, uh, we're, we're not, neither. No, not. You know no, what though? Greg's a fucking weird, else. weird, fucking odd, fucking crazy, just fucked up individual. But I feel like if Greg had a puppy, he would take fucking awesome care of it. He probably would. If that wouldn't like make pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> no, like, no, like Greg, Greg's a fucking weird guy, but I think he's like I. I Thank you. I, was, I was really looking forward to meeting. No, with thank him. you, Drake. So if, if, any, if anyone's taking if anyone's taking fucking stock score here, you have what one, two, three, four, five of us from Ontario, two from the U.S., and one from New Brunswick. Oh yeah, let's see, I'm the fucking outcast here. You are the outcast here. Yeah, <laughs> Nick's from PEI. I'm from New Brunswick. Fuck off. And a racist. <laughs> At least I'm not in beer wasteland. Where all the racists live. <laughs> yeah, when, when we go offline, I'll tell you that story. That that segues into my story. Why don't we go offline? We got so many good stories to tell. Fuck you all. Who I have no idea. No, we, have, we, we actually have 11, 11 viewers right now. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Ooh. Yeah, at this point in the night, that's that's uncalled for. I know. I know. I'm I'm probably one of them. Oh, no. I'm, I'm just trying to watch comments. Yeah. One I'm, two, watching com I'm watching comments too, so that's. Are we all watching comments? Oh, is, yeah. is it really only two viewers? <laughs> yeah, I got the comments over too. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> but see, I don't know, I don't know if, it, if we're in the thing. It shouldn't count us, though. It's stupid. I don't know. Well, well, it's two different screens, so I can't see why it wouldn't. We're in Hangouts, but then yeah. it's also being played on YouTube. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, no, again, like, what if I do a, uh, like, if I'm testing something through, like... Okay, then, then, then let's all close out the comments for a second and see what happens. They're all but one, obviously. No, no that, that's, that's, I'm, I'm down. Mine's closed right now. 
Just close mine. And now, you ever seen that? No, nobody can now see how many people. I, are I've, I've closed my YouTube. There's 12 viewers still. Okay. So, yeah, like, give, give, give it like 10, yeah, 20 seconds. Yeah, refresh yeah. it in 30 yeah, seconds. Re refresh it. Well, well, we'll sit here and talk. Uh, yeah. yeah um, so go. basically, I, I, because I have the main main cast, I have it down in the corner how many viewers we have. So uh, we're, down, we're down to 11 viewers now. So, Chad, what, what do you think of said Pupper's Ale? Hey, GSHL team is here. What's going on, sir? What's going on? Do you want to come I, in? Uh, I actually quite like For a little bit. Ale. I'm going to, uh, you know what? I was actually, how was your time in Texas? How was your time in Texas, GSHL TV? Uh, I know you were down there. I know I didn't get to see, uh, join you for any time. Uh, you did post a live stream a few days ago, but I was still at work, so I wasn't able to join you. Okay, I'm opening the comments back up because you're like blatantly referencing them now. <laughs> well, uh, we don't have them close. Ten viewers currently. Ten viewers. Yeah, uh, he's responding to comments, so they're reading him, so we have no fucking clue what he's talking about. I was just saying that everybody, uh, everybody still open the comments still back up now. Uh, are you going live tonight? Because uh, tonight's my last night off. I might actually join you tonight if you do go live tonight when you get home. What are we, chop liver? We, well, we're going to talk when we go offline. I think he gets I home usually sure. around midnight, so we're, we're okay. Jeez, Chad, we got you for another 44 minutes, and you're going to find uh, Now, normally, up normally I watch I watch TV's live, live stream while I'm pooping on my second break. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and I mean, I, I won't deny. Yeah, see, it's alive. Uh, I won't deny that people people at work are probably looking at my stall weird because of things that are being said. Because I don't have headphones when I go downstairs, I don't bring them with me. So you know, he he and his buddies are talking, and uh, he's live while I'm shitting. And there's like 15 Asian guys around me that don't speak English very well. Why is Chad talking to his turd? <laughs> She's like Randy from that one episode of South Park. What am I sipping? I, I'm currently sipping Puppers. Puppers uh, from Stack. I and uh, somebody puppers asked you, what you, did, you did, did you yeah. say, what, you, what do you think of it? What do you think of the Puppers? I, you know what? It's not the greatest, but it's not the worst either. But remember, I don't drink my beer cold, right? I drink my beer room temperature. So this is a beer yeah. that actually does have to be cold. I'll it's a room temp lager. You're a fucking weirdo. It is a beer that has to be cold. The room temperature, there is some faults in it. Uh, but I drank cold. Faults, I thought it was good. There are faults that are faults that wouldn't be there if it was cold. Greg, you're at the you're at like the point of just fucking hilarity right now with how drunk you are. Greg, Greg's drinking his uh it's, his it's bourbon great. right now. I love when Greg. No, I love, no, I'm not. I, I love I, this. Actually, I love I'm this stage real, of intoxicated actually, Greg. No, I'm actually relatively sober right now. I, I'm just drinking another Canuck right now. You seem like well, then then they, then you're tired or something. There's something like you're kind of. I I, well, I, well, I was tired before I started this chat because because I was drinking with my wife when we were watching a movie before this started. But uh, oh, how how did she like Predator? By the way, how did she like Predator? I don't know. I haven't asked her. She fell asleep right after it. Nice. Oh, are you serious? What is such a good movie though? Like there was no like no no movie. there was no after discussion at all. She's like the movie ended. She fell asleep. That was it. My wife is okay. Here's the thing about my wife. Just like sex. Not, this is my, crazy. Well, yeah, exactly, Nick. And, and, and you know, because you've had sex with my wife a few times. So, <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's like wow, that was a kind of a kind of a, uh, a guilty giggle by Nick right there. No, <laughs> Nick's, like, Nick's like you don't fucking know what I did after I roofed you. Uh, you know, you have no idea. You weren't even there. You were taking care of your mom's pool. That's right. I was. That's right. I don't know if you chloroformed her or not. <laughs> I mean, she was very groggy when I got home. But, uh, but that's no, because I... you brought her to a fucking camera show. <laughs> she wanted to go. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, she wanted she a hashtag, camera too. Hashtag, hashtag me too, Nick. Ah, very funny. No, but no, my wife, my very wife funny enjoys movies, movies on a very basic <laughs> level. She doesn't. She doesn't like to discuss them. So. You know, with her, it's like, did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good. And that's about the most I get out of her. Yeah, well. So, so we, we, we watched Commando last week. She quite enjoyed that because, you know, I kind of explained to her, this is like the quintessential 80s action movie. We're just like, it's just Schwarzenegger killing a whole army. That's all you need to know about the movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pretty much. So Bang, happens. boom, explode. Which Bang, is why boom. Delta Force is just as good of a movie because it's fucking Chuck Norris. He needed to cool off. <laughs> Fucking roundhouse kick from the beer. Remember when I told you I'd kill you last? <laughs> I lied. <laughs> what happened? Uh, to him? I'm going to take the pup, I'm go. going to take the puffs out to pee. So I'm going to turn off my microphone first and uh, turn on the cell phone like usual.
Take the puppers Yay. out. Cell phone chat. The Commando is basically the movie that inspired all the McBain clips there, set from the oh, Simpsons. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Have you ever what happened seen... to him? I let him go. Have you ever seen all those? Like, did somebody? Yeah, there's there's a... a... I'm wearing an Ulfas. They put them all together into like <laughs> so you can watch them in like chronological order. It's actually like a bit of a like short movie. All the McBain clips together. It's pretty cool. Actually, no, yeah. but I, I really feel I should search YouTube for that now. Mendoza. Mendoza. Come on, baby. Let's go pee pee. Yeah, pee -pee. Come on, let's go. You know what? I am let's go pee pee. Come on. <laughs> then we'll eat a cheesecake together. Go pee pee, then we'll eat cheesecake. No, I gotta go pee pee. I'm very good. <laughs> Nick, you should have got TV before running. we started. I Nick is running. I wonder how much recipe has changed since then. For what, Chet? For uh, Pat's Blue Ribbon. It says uh, selected as America's Best in 1893. I wonder how uh, the recipe has changed since then. Well, I, 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 would, I would assume that they've re removed all actual malt. Uh, <laughs> right, they probably made additions of a lot of like high. Well, I mean that's the thing, right? Even if they were doing it still all malt and all hops, it would uh, it would be different because the same hop strains and the same malt strains wouldn't exist anymore. Yeah, it's all different. The yeast would would have changed drastically. Let's see what's in the fridge, guy. Uh, one buddy from work, he just came back from the states, and he got me a Budweiser Freedom Reserve. The fuck is that? Apparently, the Budweiser is making a red in the States now. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that it's one. It's a red ale? It's a red yeah. ale. Oh, wow. Uh huh. He, he's giving me a can. I'm going to try some but, freedom. But have, have you had a, any of the beer made with that model's vagina yeast yet? Oh, my God. What? It's gross. Beer from the model's vagina yeast. You haven't heard of that? Yes, did. Yeah, that's the thing that happened. No, that was a beer from two years ago in England. Oh, there you go. I, I didn't realize it, it was that old. I didn't realize but, that. But am I correct that they don't actually make the beer from the vagina yeast? They just add it in sort of later to whatever say it's in there, but it's they, not actually... You well, don't, what they, they don't did was they, it from cultured, the they cultured the vagina yeast into yeast they used for the beer. So you're not actually... Because to culture the yeast, you're going like four or five generations down. You're not eating her vagina yeast. You're eating her vagina yeast great, great, great grandchildren. I need some of that in my life. Fuck me, that's horrible. <laughs> Jesus. Eggs in heaven. Wow. <laughs> Even I have my limits. <laughs> and they haven't been reached yet. Yeah, right? Exactly. I don't want to taste anyone's great 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 grandchildren. Mm. You of all people are the person I would have expected to want to. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, that, no, that, I, I thought that would have been like a bucket list thing for you. Like, no, actually, that being said, like if, if you gave me that beer, I would totally try it. It's why not? <laughs> shit, you know shit. what? I, you know what? I'll I'll try anything once. I would try it as well. All right. Thank you, you, Tim. Oh, Thank you for realizing this. Tim just said these dudes are weird. <laughs> he's probably talking about me specifically maybe redbeard the rest of us yeah, are yeah. normal the, everybody but redbeard and greg uh, are pretty normal <laughs> well i don't know chet might be high on something but i i feel like normalcy is for suckers so yeah, yeah. and it was late he didn't say these dudes he just said these dude these dude are weird. These dude are weird. Which which of the that, that that's like these is a plural, but dude is the singular. Uh, don't, yeah, don't 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 try. <laughs> it's not gonna <laughs> help. But but am I think the same guy. Like I was looking at the comments earlier. Doesn't he say something about kids? A few comments down. That kind of is a little awkward. Mm -hmm. what? I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I think you're you're just weird <laughs> yourself. <laughs> no, oh, he, no, no, Back Tim at 10, says, no. Well, Tim I mean, Bruce says kids can't say any, can't say nothing. That that sounds a little awkward. Was that retracted? I got a couple of retracted messages. No, well, it's still it's still uh, here. It, I can it, still it was see about it. 13 minutes ago. If you're watching timestamps, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. That's not important.
Well, now it got awkwardly silent. Now yeah, this right. what happened there? <laughs> now it's time to drink, man. Just timing. Right. You know that that hurts my feelings, Alicia. That hurts my feelings. That really hurts <gasps> my feelings. Oh, is Booberry on here? No, a different Alicia. The booberry, uh, the booberry, the booberry doesn't know how to use the internet. She's too fucking drunk. She's a fucking <laughs> drunken Pollock. She doesn't know how to use the internet. Uh, drunk, drunken Pollock, that sounds like my kind of girl. I know it's your kind of girl. I mean, the only reason you know how to use the internet is because Agnes turns it on for you. She doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> I'm the fucking pet guy in the family. Fuck <laughs> No, uh, you know, I I talked to Booberry once since Liquid Arts Fest, and she she's doing good. But uh, yeah, the Booberry the Booberry is still the Booberry. Uh, when, when I talked to her, she called me, and I could barely understand anything she said because she was so drunk on vodka it wasn't funny. I'm like, uh, Alicia, how about you you call me in the morning? And she's like, okay, and then she never called back. Uh, but I I just asked this Alicia if I'm weird, and she said, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, don't, I, I honestly don't think you're that, that weird, Chad, but that's also coming from me. So. Yeah, well, coming from you, that, that you telling me I'm normal is actually... What are you barking at? Really, what are you barking at? You're alone on the couch. Help is over here. Where's Boris? Where are you? Speaking of weird, he's talking to his dogs like they understand English. Boris <laughs> is in the kitchen. With Dinah, showing on the old banjo. Maybe. Jokes on you, Chad. Your dogs are from Quebec. He's a good friend. <laughs> nice. Right. Well, anyway, uh, yeah. says, Dan, why would you talk about what, what? What are we talking about? Why would we talk about what? Uh, when you start frying a pack of bacon strips at 10:30 p.m., you know you're gonna need serious mustard on uh, mustard on bacon. That's, that's, not, a good, that's not a good time right there. You know what? If I'm making a sandwich, like a breakfast sandwich, I usually go like mustard, uh, mustard, bacon, eggs, cheese. <clears throat> mustard works well with mustard. bacon and eggs. It does. Mustard see, I could, I could see like, uh, I could see maybe uh, a nice, a nice like Dijon mustard working on bacon. Yeah. Oh yeah. That nice spice. Mm -hmm. Fre French but, is but hot, yeah, spicy, but Dijon yellow, style. yellow well, that's fucking that's mustard good. on, on mustard's bacon. Good. No, yeah, yellow works no, as well. You know what, it smells better, but yellow works. I'll say the new, the new hot and spicy I'm Dijon, Dijon that uh, French is good. I'm yeah, sounding like I'm completely against it, but when I when I started my keto diet, I used mustard on everything. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I did use mustard on bacon, and it wasn't he's horrible. Saying, he said drowned it in mustard. That's yeah, I don't cool. drown it in mustard. <laughs> yeah. I like, you know, a, a, a healthy squirt, you know, but, like, not, yeah. not enough that all I taste is mustard. Anyway, it's uh, it has reached 1130. I really need to be responsible and go to bed so I can do a good job at the beer fest tomorrow. Uh, but thank you for having me this evening, and I wish all of you. A fantastic Cheers. rest of your day. All right, already, Carrie. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Right. Peace have, out. Have fun Good luck with rest there, Highlander. Yeah. Cheers, you're, not, you're not allowed to work for Highlander unless you're wearing a kilt. Oh, yeah, I, you, you know should, what? Now, you should have talked to me. I could have lent you a kilt. I really wish I had one now. That would have been That's fucking really awesome. Really I have one. so many kilts, it's not funny. I could have oh, lent you one. Fuck me. It would have been a, you would have had to ship it or something, though. But I would have shipped it. Overnight. There can only be one. Uh, now, now, Alicia did say <laughs> this. She says, in all fairness, I have to agree that you're one of the least weird guys in this lineup. I'm leaving now. I love you all. Peace out. How am I? I'm not weird at all. Uh, Other than the fact that you're wearing two rhinos fucking on your shirt, you're pretty normal. Ashley's more average than average Joe. I think Ashley's sex is pretty weird because he gets <laughs> guys to want to fuck him just by his name. That was you. You were the one that wanted to fuck him by his that, name. I still want to fuck him after I've met him. You're fucking weird, man. Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I can't say anything because I'm the one who designed that shirt. And you love the shirt. Yeah, that's why you took two of them. Love you long. Yeah. Shirt. <laughs> oh, bye, Red Beard. 100% less beer. Albino Rhino Sex Fest 2019, now with no beer. We don't need fucking beer at your fest. We just need vagina and a few penises. And that oh, my good. God. You know, you know uh, the worst part is you were actually pointed out this year and were told that you were better than you were last year. I know. I, I was on my best behavior. This is better. <laughs> this is better. You're, you're the, fact on your this is, the fact that this is better is the scariest part. But this is the better Greg. 
I even have a re- there's a reason why I was on better behavior, but I'm not gonna tell you while I'm online. Even though you already know, Chad. Right there. <laughs> yeah, we'll say that. What are you doing, Nick? Rod, Rod's here. Good day, Rod. What's going on, sir? Rod, I, I, I'm actually saying things tonight, and I'm, I'm getting words in. It's awesome. Words, words and things. Uh, unlike the other night. How did I send you a fucking there we go. invite? There we go. Time, Sorry. I can't remember how I sent you the invite last time. What am I doing? I'm somebody else said, somebody sent me the invite. It wasn't me. Because you, you don't like me enough to be on my Facebook. That's what it is. Oh. Right. Speaking of like... Uh, trying to get people to, like, drink craft beer. The only time I ever do it is if, like, I'm, like, with someone that's, like, a liquor drinker and they say they don't like beer but never had craft beer anymore. I'm like, hey, maybe try this out. See if you like it. And he actually is one of my friends. I'm just an idiot that doesn't think he's a friend of mine. <laughs> Chat, you are right. I mean, that, that would be a good opportunity because people who would drink liquor, they, they're, they're, they're used to tasting different things. I would say, like, they're, they're used to picking up more things out of, out of a beverage. Mm-hmm. I, used, I used to hate... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I, I used to hate beer, like, just drinking, like, Budweiser and Wilson and that crap. But then I, I got got into hard liquor for a while. Like, like I used to like, like drinking mixed drinks and more varieties of different flavors. When I first discovered craft beer, that's when I got hooked on beer, was because... And, you know, hard liquor was really taking a number on me at that point. So, uh, but when that transition happened, I discovered that, holy shit, beer could be something so much more than what the piss bread tasting lagers are like. Uh, now yeah. I don't really mind a lot of macro beers, but at the same time, it's that that's that's how it developed for me is that uh, I came in just like you were saying through the, uh, the, the more of the, the hard liquor stuff, the more variety of flavors. I mean, Sorry. personally, there's only like three macros that I actually seek out. Paps? Other than that, like, yeah, Pat, uh, Genesee Cream Ale, and uh, mm, Jenny. I, I still can't believe I didn't know that fucking Rod was on my Facebook. This is the first. I just sent. I just sent him the join link. He said he might join when he's done his review. Uh, this is the first message I've sent him since like 2016. Wow. <laughs> wow! Right. So yeah, I'm I'm an awesome friend on Facebook. How can you not know who Rod is? You know, well, I know who Rod is. I didn't know he was on my Facebook because I never see anything posted by him. You know who I see every th- every day? Maybe Lance. You don't hide their feet. I see a post by Lance every single day. I don't see a post by J- or by Rod ever. I post every day. Uh, actually, here here is the greatest thing. We're talking about macro beers. R- Brian was here taking a bunch of my old macro glasses. He was taking he was looking for the oldest glasses I have, and he took a bottle. He took my he took my original Labatt fifty because I had a Labatt fifty from the fifties. So he took that with him. That was uh, gangster. And it was it was gangster, and it was covered in film, and it was disgusting. And uh, I drank it because I'm an idiot. But uh, I'm like, yeah, that film, that's from the beer that was inside it. But uh, uh, when he was here, I showed him two things because I have two old, old Vienna bottles. One of them is an original old Vienna when it was owned by Carling. And one of them is the next old Vienna when it was first bought out by, uh, by Wilson. So one of them's from the 60s and one of them's from the 70s. Mm. And uh, when we were talking about how, you know, some people like macro beer and all that, old Vienna is still the macro beer that I choose if I'm going to drink a macro beer. And uh, it is it is what it is, right? It's it's a good beer, for me at least. Well, some of the old beers that you had, the old bottles that you had, didn't you have one that was for ten penny? I do have a ten penny. Yes, I have a ten penny yeah. downstairs. Because they actually uh, Moose had rebrewed ten penny for their um, nice. Uh, their, I actually have a system. full bottle. I have a full stubby of the uh, very first brewing, uh, well, very first national brewing of uh, of Moosehead Pale. So uh, eighty one, I think. First national, yeah. They've been making that since the thirties. Probably since like regulations changed. It wasn't it at one point in time. Uh, 
that breweries in order to be able to sell beer in that in whatever province you had to have a brewery in that province exactly yeah um, which is fucked it was even more fucked than it is now yeah think things have changed a lot over time i have a hamilton mountain brewing company beer that was in the 80s so hamilton mountain was actually in hamilton ontario uh, Brian, I didn't show you that one because I didn't want to let you steal that one from me. It's it's actually cool. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> so that, that, that's a brewery that existed for like a year and a half. Uh, Hamilton Mountain Brewing Company, uh, and uh, I mean, like I said, uh, I don't know how she won her little fight because I offered her and we're live, whatever. I don't give a shit. I offered her exactly what she would get when the house sold. But uh, yeah, my my ex wife is forced to sell the house, so I'm get, I'm getting rid of the whole collection downstairs. Uh, every every beer cup, I, I had 800 beer glasses. I packaged wow. up about 95 of them, and I've been getting rid of everything else slowly. I think uh, I think Brian took about 15 today. Yeah, I took about, I took over a dozen at least. Yeah, one of them, one, the old Carling mug is really nice. The old, uh, the old JR mug was really nice. I got an uh, old JR, an old Carling. I got an original... Original. There was actually some craft beer glasses in there too, because I sent them home with the original Nickelbrook logo and the original Cameron's logo. Yeah, and I also got the original uh, Amsterdam logo. Right now, I'm drinking out of that Schlitz glass. Oh, the Schlitz glass is a good glass. Those uh, dimples, those dimples, fucking the dimpled. Uh, I can't even think right now. The dimpled mugs. Well, not no, they're not mugs. They're uh, they're they're bowl glasses. Nucleated, right? I I can't show you a picture of them anymore because I don't have them. Uh, basement beer reviews. Jamie's having Yarmir Lager. I love that name of that beer. Uh, awesome. They they first they they yeah that's that's a uh, originally it was Yarmir Lager Czech style pilsner, so they really played it up originally, and now it's just Yarmir Lager. Uh, but uh, originally they had I don't know if they still do, but originally they had his face on the on the can. The, the Jamie's gold, face, Yarmir's face. The the can itself should have had like an extension of a mullet. Oh yeah, some hair that coming would be, off. That would be an awesome. Actual, an actual mullet hair coming off. Yes, of like cascading from the top of it down right to the bottom, like a fucking full tall can mullet. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would have been amazing. That would have been amazing with a little bit of a curl. Uh, so, so you might see back there. There's still some cans on the on the table. I got to put those in the beer room. I do have a box of beer I have to do an unboxing video for that's a mixture of the beer that was handed to Brian and, and Tina when they were at Little Beast and the beer that Brian and Tina picked up for me. So I have to do an unboxing of that. Uh, I have to get some people over here to drink some beer because we have to get this beer going before people start looking through the house. <laughs> yeah, people walk into the room of beer. It's a beer room. <laughs> it, 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 there's a bed for my daughter and there's a whole shelf of beer that's within that room. I mean, the only two it, things in the room. Here's the thing. Realistically, people are looking at a house. They're, they're not looking at the stuff in the house. Uh, some some house. people are. That's the thing, right? Like Some well, people are. Then they're fucking judge, judge. To judge the character of the person who lived there before, which she did drink a lot of beer, by the way. So. I drink anyway. once a week. I drink once a week. Yeah, but and you drink a lot once a week. No, I don't. This is beer Yeah, six. you drink 20 beers once a week. <laughs> this is beer 16. I don't no, drink six, a lot. Six. Six, six, six. Number oh, six, 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 six. No, that that if I drank six hundred and sixty six beers in a, in a week, that would be horrendously amazing and Dad. horrible at the same time. <laughs> Dad, we'd still support you if you were that much of an alcoholic. I know you would. Are you saying if you drank that much, you'd run for the hills, <laughs> run for your life, run to <laughs> the hills. Did you did you guys get to see my great my great sneak peek video tonight from my vlog? I was singing a beard song. The beards are from the beards are a band from Australia, and every one of their songs is about beards. They have really? three albums. Makes they have three sense. albums with fifteen songs an album, so they have forty-five songs about beards. Meanwhile, I was trying to get my Secret Santa sexy gift with beards, and I couldn't find anything at any sex shop in Toronto. What the fuck is that? Oh. There's fucking people that sing songs about beards, but you can't get fucking sexy beard oil in Toronto. What the fuck? Fuck Jesus Christ. What the fuck? You were, you were going to send me sexy beard oil? No, it wasn't for you. It was for somebody at my work that has a beard. I have a beard. Yeah, but you're not. Actually, it's, it, I'm, I'm a few days away from doing the shave off and letting it grow back for my for my Santa gig. 
I hate when I shave it off though. Even even though I've lost that 110 pounds, I still hate when I shave it off because I have that fucking saggy skin from being 110 pounds fatter. Yeah, it's disgusting. You should hide that. I know. Shut up. I was talking about your face. I, I wanted to talk. Hold on. Is that Chad or is that a turkey? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh you're, you're lucky you're in Pennsylvania because I'd kick your ass right now. Does it really matter when you stick your dick in it? What? <laughs> what? Uh, to any new viewers, I'm very sorry for Greg. I'm very sorry for Greg. Usually he, we wouldn't have, be online still if he was still yeah, here. Yeah, I was going to say, he's very sorry that you're still online. <laughs> what? <sighs> Gregory, Gregory. It doesn't make sense. Whose dog is that, Brian? <laughs> Whose dog is that? Um, I have no idea. I found it randomly on Google. <laughs> so you don't even have a picture of your girlfriend's dog. You have a random Google picture. It has a square head. It was funny. <laughs> Holy fuck, it does have a square head. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's a dog's head into a square. It, it, it's funnier than a normal dog. I hope that dog feels so much shame right now. Like, fuck you. I have, I have the boxers on the couch back there. So that box on the on the uh, table is the beer mail I have to unbox later. Um, that has a square head. It's, it's funnier than a regular dog. has a square head. <laughs> they do have a square head. They do have a square head. So PJ came to pick up a tent. PJ had to pick up a tent because her roommate Mel, who I helped move into PJ's house, uh, Mel has yeah. a pet pig. Mel has a pet pig named Pickles. So That's Pickles amazing. the pig, Pickles the pig went outside and got a sunburn. So Mel texted me and oh, Mel's like, no. "Chad, do you, can you lend me one of your event tents so Pickles has some shade?" I'm like, "Sure." So uh, so PJ came over to get the tent because you know PJ was <laughs> used to be to be Mel's little. Uh, little runner and she's talking to my dog she's like oh my god the great pyrenees is adorable oh helga helga is adorable too and then she's talking to boris she's like you scare me i'm like boris should scare you he's the friendliest dog in the world it's fucking helga that should scare the shit out of you she's a fucking mean bitch mm. she doesn't look like it i'm like come in the yard see what happens to you I'm like, right especially now that she's a mommy Oh, she's not, she, you know what? If if somebody goes into that room because she she made me put her fucking her her whelping box in the bedroom, she wouldn't have anything to do with it unless it was in the bedroom. Uh, so if somebody walks in that room that she doesn't know, she freaks out. If I walk in the room, she's perfectly fine. She'll let them do whatever they want to the puppies. Now uh, this is the last macro beer I have in the house currently, so we're gonna drink a Michelob Ultra next, just to get rid of uh, l lucky mm -hmm. bastard. Yes. My favorite beer. You, you don't need to rehydrate at this. Point. Now, now keep in mind that I keep all my beer at room temperatures. This yeah, I was just that. Why, Chad? Why? And uh, my my room bad. temperature right now is actually fairly high because I have the new puppies, so the house was at eighty five <laughs> degrees until today. Today it's at seventy seven. I will that say is... it's not bad at room temperature. Well, no, it could be worse. It, it, it could be worse, but it's still bad at room temperature. Uh, that's going to be fucking terrible. No, it's not terrible. There is a lot worse out there, but it's oh. not good. Trust me, there's no I, taste. It there's well, no that's taste the thing. Right? There's not much taste all. in the Ultra. There, there really isn't. Uh, it's like it's like eating this, a girl's ass at the end this, of the day and then saying, "Oh, she could have had Taco Bell too." It's like, well, it's still bad. Why do we even invite you? Why do you? I don't fucking know. <laughs> you don't. He just hacks his way in. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, basement Beer Review says Pickles the Pig would make some palate cleansing bacon. Yes. Uh, do, not, do not tell Mel that it's a good thing for bacon. She'll freak out. Is that Metal Mel? No, it's not Metal Mel. Metal Mel. Metal Mel is married to a guy named Mark. Metal Mel is uh, Metal Mel is Metal Mel. I mean, Metal Mel is but, Metal Mel. Uh, but she's no good after Paul destroyed her. It, oh no, not not many people are good after Paul destroyed them. But and we're not talking about P. A. Brunus. We're talking about the cantankerous cook. Uh, but Metal Mel is is a forty six year old woman that still thinks she's in her early twenties. Oh hell! And sort of it's looks like it. Well, to be fair, I, I like from the Rod! Movie, What's going on? Rod. 
Did I hear you were drinking a warm milk Mick Ultra? You are right. I'm drinking a warm Mick Ultra, sir. Rod is here to punch you in the face. What are you drinking, sir? A stone tangerine espresso IPA. Yeah, fuck you, Chad. Is it warm? No. Oh. <laughs> it's the hell it's the people everybody, that I'm drinking. Everybody thinks I'm fucked, right? Uh, remember, I, I was raised by, by Europeans, right? So they didn't put beer in fridges. This is what I was growing up on. I started drinking when I was eight, but it was always warm. So that's what I'm used to. Now, I'll drink a stout warm or... Oh, I'll, yeah. drink, I'll drink anything, anything I, warm, man. I, I don't Europeans care. too, but we, we grew up... Well, I would in the never fridge. do a like, ultra warm. <sighs> No, no, I, Mr. Dick, you didn't grow up by the right Europeans. You grew up by Europeans that would spend money on refrigeration. <laughs> Chad, right. Chad, Chad, for fuck's sake, you were also raised by a grandmother that told you not to cheat on your wife and then you turned down Asian twins. Have you not learned your lesson at this point? <laughs> that maybe you don't need to follow your upbringing that closely. Jesus. Remember the twins. I, I, I'm a good Irish boy, okay? I'm a good no. Irish boy. No, and also if it's yes, somebody's yes. wife, it's still okay. It's no, okay. it's not still okay. It's still okay. It's totally fine if it's somebody's wife. <laughs> My son was playing this last time he was here. Pokemon Coliseum. You're married. She's married. It's not like it's out of wedlock. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thank you. <laughs> Good point. Thank you. I so I, I, did, I did just get a new movie. Be encouraging. I got a new movie in the mail, guys. It was uh, Professional Wrestlers vs. Zombies. I'm really excited to watch it. Who wants to come over and watch it? With oh, I think that one actually is like great, great great one with Kevin Nash. Yeah, and Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh, gosh. oh yeah. shit, before he died. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's interesting. I Professional it. Wrestlers vs. Zombies. I'm really excited for it. <laughs> I'm kind of liking oh, it. It will be pretty yeah. epic. You get a fell up there in Canada. Oh, we get a lot of fun things up here in Canada, sir. Lucky. Like, like snow. <laughs> Nobody thinks snow is fun. Nobody. Yeah, no. Actually, the, only, the, only good, the only good thing about snow is I can get naked and hide in it, and I become a snow assassin. Yeah. <laughs> a, snow, a snow assassin. <laughs> no snassin. No snassin. No snassin. Oh shit. Oh shit. He's concussed. Who? I'm watching the Toronto Edmonton game. You know what I like about your league? You can actually still play football and hit people the way they're supposed to be hitting. Oh, game. it's CFL. Oh, wow. You're, 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 talking, you're actually talking watching CFL. CFL. Oh, I was gonna say, I've never heard of an American watching watch CFL, CFL ever. There's not even that many Canadians that watch the NFL. No. <laughs> well, what's <laughs> funny is that Canadian football is actually older than American football. Oh, yes. no, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, CFL, CFL was – I my vice principal when I was in elementary school, grade six, he was an Ottawa Rough Rider when the Ottawa Rough Riders won the Grey Cup. And he came in with the Grey Cup and everything. And he's like – because he, every, every, like, ten years he got a <laughs> tour with the Cup again. So he came in with the cup and his helmet, and, and I got pictures wearing his helmet. And it's awesome, but at the same time, I've watched like three great, uh, three CFL games in my life. Three, just three. Oh, well. Arena Football uh, League only has four teams now. So well, the XFL is coming in again too, right? Oh my God, Vince McMahon! What yeah. the fuck is he doing? Yeah. Like how how much money do you have to throw around? I mean, you've he, done he has a lot. He has a lot of money to throw around. Have you not seen how much money the, the WWE makes? Oh, it's crazy. But it's like you've Our done this before. You, you know it's a failure. Like <laughs> it's not going to work. It's like a bad. His, his wife. His wife is a cabinet member now too, right? She makes a lot of money too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, she's not a cabinet member. She just uh, has like a government position. Which was like for like small business. She's not actually a cabinet Sorry, here member. here in Canada that would be a cabinet member. <laughs> shots fired. No, no, it's not shots fired. It's you know, uh, I, differences in the way the government works. Here in Canada, yep. that same job would be a cabinet member job. Yeah. I don't know if any government works anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, are, you that out loud. <laughs> are you saying are, are you saying the Trump administration is not doing a great job? I did not say that. I, that, I we, that don't, be, we don't we don't talk about politics. politics. We do not talk about politics mistake. here. We talk about a lot of horrible things on here, but never politics. <laughs> never politics. <laughs> we have to draw the line somewhere. We have to draw the line somewhere. We just want to say sorry we, for we the tariffs. Guys, we let we're, guys from Pennsylvania and Texas in, so we have to draw the line somewhere. We're, we're fine with Redbeard's r weird incest. Is Paul stuff, here? But yeah. <laughs> no, Chet's here. Chet's from Pennsylvania. Oh, well. Redbeard yeah. talking about his, his he, sister's he, kids. He's not, he's not as crazy weird redneck Pennsylvania as Paul, but he's still he Pennsylvania. Be Pennsylvania. Nobody's as weird That's as Paul. because not Paul's even. actually not from <laughs> Pennsylvania. He's from like Alabama or he Georgia. He's originally from them. Alabama. Alabama's his original home place. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, he, that's why he's as fucked as he is. Alabama's his home. I, I just thought he was exactly. like exactly. Now, hey, now, what part of Pennsylvania did you grow up in? What? What part of Pennsylvania you grew up in? Uh, the current area where I am now, uh, <laughs> Western Pennsylvania, between Erie and Pittsburgh, in the middle of nowhere. Oh, okay. Basically, uh, well, city. <laughs> not that, not that far away from Titusville, where the first oil well was drilled. Yeah. Uh, old I, oil I, country. I, so, I so every so every like um uh issue that has to deal with like oil and uh wars and everything that has to deal with that stuff. Yeah, you can blame us. We're the ones that started it. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Che, you probably appreciate the two beers I got off the chat tonight. What? Um, it was a 1980 and a 1979 <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers uh, <clears throat> commemorative beer. What was that, like Iron City or something like Iron that? Iron City, which doesn't exist. Oh, yeah, anymore. Iron City, yeah. I got the 79 and 80 Steelers cans. By the way, Iron City's not that great, but it could be better with age. <laughs> you know, the, only 38, 39 years. Right. No, yeah. I, I, I gave him the cans. I gave him the cans under conditions that he would not drink them because they did not line the cans back then. He'll get lead poisoning and die. Yeah. Right. If they were bottled, go ahead and drink them. I don't care. But uh, the can, stay away. I will say in the CFL that one point rule does make a difference because Edmonton won 16 to 15. 16 to 15. Because a couple of the guys took a knee and they didn't run out of the end. I love they don't have a fair catch either in the Canadian Football League. You have to run with the ball. Doesn't like uh, Johnny Football now play for the CFL or is he like, signed? For, like, what? Yeah, he's, he's, he's assigned to Hamilton right now. Oh, boy. There, there was a couple different oh, boy. NFL players that have signed in Canada over the years. There was, yeah, there was well, one, I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now, but there was one that was suspended. He was suspended in the NFL for two years, so he played in Canada for two years, and I went back to the NFL. Running back. No, that was uh, Trello. Yeah. But yeah, Johnny Football's a cancer, so. <laughs> yeah, good luck with him. <laughs> did, you, did, you, yeah, actually, did you say Terrell Owens? Wait, did, Terrell Owens is a great football player. I know. I'm, I I think that he actually played in the CFL. Though. Yeah, it was, it was, it was the Toronto Argonauts. Whoever it was, he signed with the Toronto Argonauts for a while. Terrell Owens with the Hall of Fame this next ceremony. I mean, But honestly, like I used to watch the NFL like a couple of years ago, quite a bit, a lot. But anymore, I kind of don't, just because like. Uh, when, yeah, who, who do we have? Here? Stand uh, some of the players, the majority of the players on your uh, team. <laughs> okay, NFL stars that have played in the CFL. Interesting to really yeah. watch. NFL stars that have played in the CFL. We have Warren Moon. And we have uh, Joe Theismann. Yes, oh, that's right, Theismann. Doug Flutie. Yep. Yeah. Flutie Flake. Jeff Garcia. Yeah. Cameron Wake. 
Yeah. Brandon Browner. Yeah, Ricky Williams played too. Joe Horn. Fred Biltinkoff. Fred Biltinkoff. Uh, Ricky Williams. Yep. Chad Johnson. Yep. Ocho Cinco. Chad. Ocho Cinco. Oh, I was going to say, didn't he change his name to Ocho Cinco? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Mark, Mark, yeah. Mark Gastineau. Yeah. That's that's a list of uh, them, apparently. Yeah, he killed himself, I think. So, Ricky, yeah, Ricky Williams, he played for the Argonauts in 2006. Yeah. I thought Lord so, Phillips went there for a little He got cut from – uh, uh, Johnny Manziel from the uh, Cleveland Browns. He, he, was big enough, he wasn't a big enough star to be on this list. <laughs> Apparently. What are you talking about? It's Johnny Football. He has that name trademarked. <laughs> Who, who's taking the Browns to the Super Bowl? He's trying to stay out of rehab right now. <laughs> <laughs> Top 15 yeah, NFLers that you didn't know played in the CFL. Michael Sam, Tyler Klutz, Andre Michael Thorpe, Gerald Freeman, Mike Vandergott. Vanderjet? Vanderjet, yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Cardero Law. Who? Car Cardero Law. I think it might played be for the Stampeders, and then he played for – I don't know who he played for. <clears throat> uh, Seattle Seahawks. Dontrell Innan. Joe Horn. Joe Horn, receiver. Andrew Hawkins. Brandon Browner. Ricky Williams, of course. We already talked about John Ryan. Joe Theismann. And Cameron Wade. Sorry, Wade. Cameron Wade. Yeah, Wake's like a star. Who lets blind guys read all this fucking news articles? Why the fuck is the blind guy always know. reading? Because it's entertaining. It's your show. Uh, Oswald says if you can't do it in three downs, don't come out. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. I like the three and, downs too. And uh, Basement Beer Review says Chet is the worst. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Red is pretty bad too. So I just drank hey, my last hey, beer hey. I had out. Should I go get another beer? Yeah. Yes. My answer is always yes. Get two while you're at. Nick, you are. You're terrible, Nick. <laughs> yes. The answer is always. I'm just encouraging. I'm supporting my friend. Nick, you are always terrible. Terrible, Nick. Hitting on my hitting on my one year old daughter. I, I, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, Jesus, Nick. The fuck? I wouldn't even do that. Um, I was going to say something. I know nobody's here from New Brunswick, but does anybody want to hear the list of breweries that are going to be yes. here tomorrow? Tell me the list of breweries that are going to be at your festival tomorrow. All right. So we got breweries coming from uh, from four different provinces and some from Maine. Uh, so we've actually got one. We got was it a whole bunch of breweries from New Brunswick, PEI, and uh, Nova Scotia, obviously, and one from Ontario. Uh, so I'll, I'll list the one from Ontario first, just because alphabetically it's first, and it's at the top of the list here. Anderson Craft Ales is going to be here, which is cool. They were here last, last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, Urban Farm Fermentary in Maine. I think they do like kombucha, like alcoholic kombucha. Uh, Mohegan Brewing Company in Maine. Lone Pine Brewery, Portland, Maine. Uh, Big Axe Brewery is going to be there. They're the one running the festival, obviously. Uh, now I'm just going to butt in for one second and say the the reason, we, and we've talked about this before, Anderson is always going to be there because he is originally from uh, Brasserie de Petit So. Oh. That guy. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, so, yeah, Big Tide from St. John's going to be there. Big Spruce from Cape Breton is going to be there. Boxing Rock from I, th I think where are they from? Bridgewater? No, not Bridgewater. Boxing Rocks, Nova Scotia. Yeah, Boxing Rocks, Nova Scotia. I'm just trying to think what town they're from. Anyway, um, Bog Trotter Brewing is going to be there. They're from New Brunswick. I think they're from somewhere outside of, of uh, Ferguson. Garrison Brewing from Nova from Halifax is going to be there. Greystone from Ferguson. Gillis of Belle Isle Winery, which is actually a guy I went to school with that runs that. 
uh, Sober Island Brewing Company is going to be there from, uh, I think they're also from Nova Scotia, from Halifax, maybe. Grim Ross from Ferrickton is going to be there. Foghorn from Rossé is going to be there. Uh, Brasser de Petiso is going to be there. Uh, Long Bay uh, is going to be there from Qu there from Rossé as well. Maybe from Ferrickton, maybe Brewing Company from New Brunswick. Niche Brewing from New Brunswick is going to be there. Ewart's favorite, Hammond River Brewing, is going to be there. Uh, Sunset Heights Meadery is going to also be there. I've had some, uh, they make a line of uh, meads called Pollen Angels, which are really actually kind of nice. Um, Red Rover Craft Cider from uh, PEI Brewing Company, which is from PEI, obviously. Pickaroons uh, is going to be there from from Ferguson. Pump House from Moncton is going to be there. Off Grid Ales, which I I want to say they're the ones out in they're in the country south of Ferguson somewhere. They're in they're from New Brunswick. They actually have some good stuff. Triders Brewing from Nova Scotia is going to be there. Uh, Trailway Brewing, obviously, going to be there. Think Brewing is also going to be there. Tatamagoosh Brewing Company from Nova Scotia. Coastliner Cider from, New from NB somewhere. York County Cider. Upstreet Craft Brewing from from they're from Charlottetown, PEI, and Lake Street George Brew, uh, Lake St George Brewing, uh, from Maine, Sada City is going to be there from Ontario, and finally uh, Two Crows Brewing from Nova Scotia, Halifax. So two Ontario breweries. Yeah, Sada City is going to be there. I wonder what they're going to bring. So this is a beer festival you're going to tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to uh, go to uh, the Big Axe Beer Fest uh, up in uh, up in Ferrington. Uh, or I was at a fair place called Nakawick, New Brunswick. It's out in about uh, about half an hour outside of the the city of Ferrington, New Brunswick, which is uh, our capital city. Um, and it's about two hours from where I'm at. Uh, yeah. And but it's a, it was a really nice festival when I went last year. Uh, this time they're actually doing like a bus bus tour up from St. John. It wasn't that much more than a regular ticket, so I'm taking a bus ride up from from just 10 minutes away from my house uh, up to uh, this thing and uh, check it out. However, yeah. I'm a little squeamish about going because I'm going by myself. Oh, uh, and my friends can, get, can go. Oh, well. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm but Nick, you can take us up to you. can totally meet people. Exactly. Have, have all sorts of fun. Or look like them. a fucking weirdo in front of everybody. You well, that's, that, that's, that's on you. That's on you if you want to look like a weird in front of everyone. Let me, uh, where's last year's pictures? Like, hey, by the way, are you trying to, are you working through a Unibrew variety pack right now? I actually, I am. I see a lot of pictures on the Beer Coalition going up from Unibrew. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm drinking a Blanche de Chamblay right now. And that's probably where I'm going to finish off for the night because I don't want to get too crazy tonight. Yeah. Um, I've got, I bought oh. a Tasters pack that had, the the Megadeth beer, the two of them all. Mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, the the uh, the what was the one I Raffman the with the the one with made with whiskey malt like pale like, like smoked malt. Right. Uh, there's the the one I'm drinking now, Blanche de Chamblay. It's got Fin de Mont in it, the triple. Uh, yeah. It's got uh, 1837, which is a Belgian pale ale, which is kind of like Unibrew's answer to like Duvel. I actually sent one of those to Lee as a trade, beer trade. He wants to try it. And Ephemer Blueberry, the um, it's like a, a blueberry wheat. Yeah. Nice. nice. I've had my, several of them. Just started Sorry, selling two Lamont four packs for three ninety nine. Oh yeah. It's actually not a bad beer. Have you had it yet? No, but four pack for three ninety nine is a steal with it. That's a that's a rod deal at that price, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so cheap for that. Yeah. That is that is the same. You'll yeah. be getting a uh, a package with a couple beers and two shirts soon, there, Nick. All right. The sex shirt and the uh, and the, the 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 staff shirt from this year's yeah, fest. I, I still want a staff yep. shirt if you have one left. God damn it, Chad. Cody, let me know if you're coming. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, I'll my I'll let you know back, tomorrow if I am, but it's it's a back high up, probability. Girl. Send me a list of where you're going too, so I can tell you what I want. Tell me what you want, what you really, really I'll want. Send you, I'll send you a list right now. Of the, I'll send you a list right now of the possibilities where I'm going, and you can tell me what you want. 
Here, I'll look it up. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. It's all, it's all the way Well, if you want to be my man. Is that right? See you guys. Have a good night. Bye. 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 The uh, Spice Girls. It was cute for time for him to leave. <laughs> <laughs> time to peace. See ya. Deuces. Peace, bitch. Oh. You poop. Okay. That's a good poop. Yeah. I mean, oh, holy shit. Radar is here. Oh, oh my god. Holy we're flying. Fuck. This, we're all screwed. This is going to be flagged by the FBI. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. FS, FSB. <laughs> FSB. Yeah, you know me. Yeah. Oh my oh, god, did we're... fucking radar show up while I was changing cameras? Yeah, radar's here. Radar! Buddy. What's going on, sir? Who is this uh the thin looking guy? <laughs> Are you talking about Ashley? That's the albino oh, sex toy. Albino oh, you. You look good, man. Thank you, sir. Right. How's it going? Oh, it's going. It's going. It's going, yeah. Yeah. What's up tonight? Uh, nothing. We're drinking. We're drinking yeah. it. Once we go offline, I'll tell you all some stories about things that are going on that I'm not allowed to talk about online. Oh, 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 shit. Sorry. Yeah, so why the fuck aren't we offline like half hour ago, Chad? Because we're not. Uh, so my next beer is Nickel Brooks in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. All right. So here's, here's some oh, pictures oh, oh. from last year's uh, Big Axe Fest. Pete, there's actually a big axe. That is a big axe. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest axe in the world. It's like some kind of, you know, those small towns in the rural everywhere will do like make the biggest whatever. That yeah. looks like an axe they, I would they, wield. They made the biggest axe in the world, and then that's why they call themselves Big Axe. Next so hometown has the biggest cock in the it's world. A pretty good fest. It was actually the closest thing in New Brunswick I've ever seen to the. Uh, <laughs> closest thing I've ever seen in New Brunswick to the Albina uh, Rhino Beer Fest. So, so oh, the, the the lines on this Funk Lab beer is Citra Haze Tropical Galactic. Galactic, Galactic Planetary, Planetary. Five point nine percent alcohol, twenty eight IBU, Galactic. and that is that is Yoda as Ryan Moreau. Another dimension, another dimension. <laughs> what, a, what about sausage? Sausage on a bun? What the fuck? Uh, what the fuck off. What's sausage there? on a bun? That's a, a MAGA uh, hat in the It was a guy with a Make America Rage Again hat. <laughs> Make America. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's why I had to take a picture of it. It was awesome. The guy from Flying Boats. He was there. I didn't, I didn't see them on the list this year. A couple of. Uh, oh, Chad, did you use my. Uh, were you just using my. Uh, the wrench? No, the wrench is packed away, unfortunately. And if uh, you're still here when we go online, I'll explain that to you because I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, I haven't talked to you too. I haven't talked to you in I don't know a year, maybe more. Yeah, you you you're too good for me now. No, uh, I I just never show up to these things. I'm just uh, you know uh, working, Lazy. work, work, and not drinking. Lazy. Except tonight, I got Rihanna ten nights to work, 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 Nick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, there's still some evil in this world, you know. There's still Gorth White hanging around. And, yeah. But I, I, I told my, my friend tonight there actually uh, if there's if there, if force light would be eradicated we wouldn't have any problems in this world whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Hey, there's what's his face, Bob Thomas. I mean Bill Ogo did your picture there. What's his friend? Joe. Hey Thomas. me, it's Joe. I'm the beer patrol guys. What's going on, guys? I don't have a I don't have a private uniform, but you gotta trust me, I'm a cop. Hey it's that, no Joe's right. name for forevermore is gonna be Bob Thomas. Bob Thomas. <laughs> I like how that. Ashley Ashley muted himself so nobody can see his sex shirt. Oh, we love Lashley's sex shirt. His sex shirt, huh? Oh, you haven't seen the sex shirt, Rod? We're all going to play with ourselves. Rod, look, at it. look, look. It's the Albino Rhino Sex Fest 2019. Now, now with featuring no beer. Wee -oo. Wee -oo. It's the Beer Patrol. Chad, you still know I'll be there, right? Wee-oo, wee-oo, Beer Patrol. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I don't know if I'm going to 
have a fucking uniform because I'm Joe and too good for it. <laughs> Joe's going to win the contest for most boring beer tube channel of 2018. Sorry, Joe, but your channel's boring. I thought that was Gee. He doesn't even have a channel anymore, does he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, no, he has a girl on his channel. A girl on his channel is definitely better than Joe. Oh, wait, 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 girl on Geese channel? What? 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 There's, there's a girl, girl on Geese G- channel? Yeah, yeah, there's the last few reviews. There's been a girl doing shots with them or something. Oh, that must be Sophie. Yeah, she's in my friend, too. That's yeah, well, movie. she's not on your channel, so it doesn't fucking matter. I don't have a channel. She's my friend, not his. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Geese having oh, sex with her. Oh, now you're getting possessive. Oh, did he think he hopes he has they're sex with her? Like, is there trouble in Ottawa? Yeah, he, he only has sex with people that look like Scott Cullen. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, oh, oh, that is really oh, that inaccurate. That, that is literally the worst thing that anyone has said tonight, and I've said some <laughs> bad shit tonight. Yeah, no, we I was. Still have, we still have ten viewers, and yeah, we're still. I, you guys are sick fuck fuckers. Yeah, we still have ten viewers. I don't know how we still have 10 viewers. Cheers, guys. In a galaxy far, far away. Hey, hey, do you have this glass, Brian? Because this is a really nice glass. Nice. I don't have a Barley Days glass. No, I do oh, not. Oh, 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 So you need to have my name when you order things from Barley Days because there's a lot of things that get sent to me. <laughs> well, I got a hoodie and a beach ball. And... I have three beach balls. Three beach balls. <laughs> They actually wrapped one of their bottles in a beach ball. And then they made fun of the fact that there was a hole in the beach ball, so they sent me two more beach balls. A lot of balls. Yeah. There was a lot of balls in the house for a little bit. Oh, balls. Balls I mean, there was, more, there was more beach balls than I have balls in between my legs because I only technically have one because I popped the other one when I was a kid. Mm. Thanks for sharing. For anyone that doesn't know that story, I was rolling around the basement on a furniture dolly and I got the ball caught in the wheel and it popped. That's terrible. What the fuck? I don't want to hear that story. Now now me and my buddy, we both had one ball. I had I had the right ball, he had the left ball. He, he had a daughter first, I had a son first. So we were making fun that you know the right ball gave you sons and the left ball gave you daughters, and then I had a daughter the second kid, so I we knew it wasn't the balls. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. <laughs> it's all nutty right there. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. It, it's still there. It's still there. And whenever I'd start dating people when I was younger, I'd be like, hey, you want to touch something cool? <laughs> That's a pick of a hey, line. who's 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 Scott Collins? That would be the other husband. Oh, is that what Sophie looks like? No, that's what. What you remember when when uh, when Guy ran away to go and talk to somebody who was dating somebody else? Oh, but yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. That girl. No, <laughs> the, the, the girl that goes out with. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, sh- shooting blanks there. Uh. <laughs> she shooting blanks? No, whatever. Oh. I, 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 don't know. <laughs> I just came back from playing pool and uh, I, I drank quite a bit actually. <laughs> I'm fairly merry. Well, uh, to to the people on the interwebs still watching us, uh, thank you for watching. We are going to go offline right now so we can talk uh, things that we normally wouldn't talk about well, online. Yeah, I can- before we go offline, how about we talk about me? No!